The story begins in the courtyard of a large mansion, where a large bonfire is burning. The man in the raincoat stood right in front of the fire, and said that his father had taught him a lot. The young man could not hold back his tears. He cried and said that his father was a great man. The young man swears that from this day on, he, Ars Luvent, will become the head of the family. After a while, the action of the story is transferred to the modern world. A man in a suit was typing something on a laptop. Suddenly, a man approached him and addressed the man respectfully. He apologized and said that he wanted to go to a party today, so could the man finish everything for him. The man with glasses smiled awkwardly and said that there was no problem, and then wished the man to have fun at the party. The man went to the subway after work, but could not get into the train carriage, as he was pushed out of there. As a result, the man was left alone at the bus stop. The man exhaled. He was 35 years old and had a very ordinary life. He was born into a very ordinary family. He works for the most ordinary company with the most ordinary salary. However, he has never had a girlfriend, and this is not quite usual. A man comes into the house and thinks that he did a good job today. Suddenly, the man felt a pain in his heart, and then the key to his apartment fell out of his hands. The man fell to the floor and the last thing he thought about was that he had a lot of pain in his chest. After a while, the man woke up and saw a beautiful girl. He was sure that he had fainted in his house. He wondered if he was in the hospital, and this girl was probably a doctor. Then he saw the lamps and thought that they were historical oil lamps. It must be a pretty old hospital. He realizes that he can't move, and he's kind of alive. Suddenly, the man heard someone barking. He saw some interesting creature that looked like a dog. However, the dog had wings, so the man thought it was heaven. Then a girl who looked like a maid came into the room, and they were talking about something in a language incomprehensible to a man. The man looked at the reflection in the maid's tray and saw himself there. He was very scared that he had become a baby. It's very similar to the fact that the main character got into a very difficult situation. However, three years have passed like this. The maid turned to Arsu Cheese and said that his tea was already ready. The young man's name was Ars Luvent and he was already three years old. After dying in his world, he was reborn as Ars Luvent. Having mastered his reading and writing skills perfectly, he learned a lot about this new world. The maid was very surprised, because the young man was only three years old. The young man was born in the Summerfort Empire, under whose ownership the lands of the Summerfort continent are. Since he had never seen such a map of the world before, he can say with confidence that this is definitely not Earth. In addition, there is a mystical phenomenon in this country in the form of magic, as if this world was created by a game. He was born and raised in the house of the Luvents among the aristocrats, which he is. My family owns the small land of Lamberk. The population at the moment is 1,000 people. Their family home is like a huge palace. It is beautiful and aesthetic. There are quite a few maids here who are always at his service and, of course, a wonderful chef lives here who prepares delicious dishes for the young man. Before, he could only dream of such a thing. He is extremely glad that he has been reborn. The young man thanks the creators of the world for creating this paradise, and he just adores them. On top of that, he has an ability that others don't have. Some soldiers were practicing on the training ground. Then the young man Ars came to the playground. He apologized for the intrusion. He wished the men a good workout and asked if he could watch. The men agreed and said that Ars visits them very often, despite the fact that they are only three years old. But he is so smart. Ars thinks that, to tell the truth, he is not interested in the art of war. Then he turns his attention to a young man with a spear, who is practicing hard. Ars looks closely at the young man and thinks that the ability that only he has is called analysis. The young man sees that the young man's name is Millet Crystal, and he is 21 years old. All his abilities are at D level, but shooting is at B level. In one historical game, there were statuses very similar to this. For example, politics, bravery, command, ambition, and wisdom. The number on the left is the current value of the level. The number on the right is the maximum value. This is a guide for describing the levels. It's easier to portray it as a historical game. It would all look something like this. One day, the ranks would have to range from D to S. The young man looked in the mirror. He touched his image, but realized that he could not use the analysis on himself. It's a little disappointing. However, he is even afraid to see it. The status of Millet, who is currently training, is strange. He has a good level of archery. He is a pretty strong archer. However, for some reason he trains with a spear instead of a bow. It doesn't look like he's good with a spear. The young man does not understand why he does not use a bow. I would like to see him with a bow. The young man approaches Mr. Millet. The warrior asks what happened to the young sir, and then asks how he found out his name. 
Ars asked why he shouldn't try using a bow. Millet smiled and said it wasn't much of a weapon. Shooting from far away is not manly. Ars awkwardly said that he thought he could master archery and asked if he could try it once. Millet wants to object, but he looks at Ars's shining eyes. He agrees and says he will do it, but he has never used a bow before. The man turns to Milliot and says that since this is his first time shooting an arrow, he should shoot close up. Ars objects and says that he should shoot away and from the place where the young man points. Millet feels uneasy. However, he hesitantly pulls the arrow and hits the target exactly. Everyone was very surprised, and someone said it was an accident. They asked Millet to try again. Time after time, the young man hit the target. The other warriors were very surprised that Millet was good with a bow. He looked pretty stupid with a spear, but he has a great talent with a bow. After all, onions may not be so bad. There aren't that many crowds and stuff in combat. However, another man asked how Ars knew Millet had such a talent for the bow. Everyone looked at Ars. The young man thought that his ability to see people's abilities and whether they would believe him. He didn't understand why they even believed what a three-year-old child was saying. It makes him wonder if they think there's something wrong here. He doesn't know what to say to him. Ars said it was a simple guess. After a while, it was time for lunch. A huge table full of food was set for the young man. Ars said that today's food looks very tasty. He thanked me for this rich table. He tasted the food and it was delicious. The last time he ate this at a bento store was when he was an office worker. Suddenly, a man called the young man. He said that Ars seemed to have noticed that Millet was good with a bow. The young man agreed with him. The man's name was Raven Lewent and he was 30 years old. In this world, this man was Ars's father. All he had was a frighteningly angry face. He was a good man who achieved everything by himself and all thanks to his determination. He has a fairly large army, which he manages himself. The cavalry's ability was as much as S rank. Raven said he liked Ars's intuition. He will be a lord in the future. The ability to analyze human qualities is a very important skill for a young man. As for a lord, Ars agreed. He realized that he would inherit the earth in the future. He hopes he can make everyone happy. All this time, he will continue to study. Raven asked if Ars really likes tender dragon meat and if he wants a part of a man because he wants to grow up faster. Ars was delighted and thanked his father, and then said that he would try his best. Three months after that, he continued to learn about this country. Then he began to notice something, that his future would not be bright. In the world he lives in, the future of empires is mostly very bleak. It is very likely that his country will not have the best of times in the near future. The government of the empires is corrupt. Because of this, the farmers seem to have rebelled. The nobles are fortifying their own lands. Battles are taking place all over the country because the law is every man for himself. If this continues, the empire will collapse. The hero has a feeling that a bloodbath is just around the corner. If this happens, the hero will have to lead his own army into battle. He thinks about himself in the war. He may have been reborn as a lord's child, but he is still an ordinary office worker born in peaceful Japan. He wonders why he is the one. Could the servants of the manor protect the people of Lamberk? He remembers the lovely maids and the lovely locals. They were all so kind to him. He wants to protect them no matter what it takes. He doesn't understand what he has to do. He remembers the words of his father, who spoke about his ability to analyze human qualities and that these abilities are a very important skill for being a lord. Ars finally realized something. He rushed out of his room in a hurry. He walked around the city and watched the people. One of the residents recognized Mr. Ars and said that it was quite rare to see him. He asks if he really went shopping. Ars says it's something like that. He sees a group of young men who were smiling sweetly and decided to analyze them, but their characteristics did not exceed the level of C. Then he began to analyze other residents, but the result was exactly the same and their level did not exceed the rank of C. The young man was tired and decided to sit down on the steps. He thought that frequent use of analysis put a lot of strain on the eyes. Suddenly, he sees how the woman pushed the young man out of the establishment and shouted at him to get out of here because they would not sell him anything. The young man was very hungry and, trembling, began to get up from the ground. Ars noticed his dark skin and unusual facial features. He's sure what kind of race it is. At that moment, someone said it was a stamp. The woman told her son not to approach him, and the man added that it was disgusting and that garbage could do such a thing here. Stamps are a race common in a country that is located across the ocean from the continent of Summerfort. There are very few representatives of this race in their continent. Most of Mark's race often become servants and are heavily discriminated against by people from the Summerfort continent. It was written in a book he was reading. At that moment, the young man got up with difficulty and walked away. He curled up into a ball, sitting on his feet, and his stomach suddenly rumbled. 
Suddenly, someone handed the young man bread. He was surprised and looked up. This someone was ours, who stood right in front of the young man and handed him bread. He said that if the young man wanted to, then let him eat. The people who watched this did not understand who this young man was and why he was helping Mark. Then someone suggested that this boy was from the Levent family. The young man's stomach began to rumble again. Then ours squatted down. The young man reached out and awkwardly took a bun of bread. Ours smiled. Then the young man took a bite of bread, chewed and began to cry. He thanked Ars for the meal. The main character asked him not to worry. Then he used the analysis and looked at the characteristics of the young man. His name was Ritsu Muse. All of his stats were very high, and his cavalry, stamina, and oratory abilities were at S level. Ars was incredibly surprised by the stunning status without flaws. His abilities are similar to one of the best heroes in Japanese history. Their future is sure to be terrifying. Ritsu looked at Ars, who was watching them with shining eyes. The young man thanked Ars for the bread and said that he would go. Ars started following the Ritz. The young man said that it was better for him not to follow him, because then his parents would get angry. Ars was thinking about protecting his land. He needed a fighting force. He doesn't have the power, but the others can help him. He can gather talented and capable people and then they will be able to defend their territory. Ritsu started running away from Ars and screams at him not to chase him. He doesn't want the young man to get into trouble. Ars ran after him and shouted, asking if the young man wanted to become his servant. This surprised Ritz incredibly. Starting from here, the story of strengthening the lands of the main character began and thus he stood up for the defense of his country and his people. Ars once again asked the young man if he would like to become his servant. Ritsu was very surprised. He asked the young man if he was joking. Ars gave a negative answer. He said that his name is Ars Luvent and he is the son of the lord who owns this city. He opened his cloak and told Ritz to look, because here is the cross of the Luwin family. Ritsu was surprised and asked if the young man was really a lord. Ars told Ritz that he thought the young man would have great talent, so he begged us to become his servant. Ritsu asked about the talent and asked Ars how he would know if they had just met. Ars said it was because he realized it when he saw it. Ritsu paused and then said that he was grateful to the young man, so he did not want to cause trouble for him. He doesn't think it's a good idea to take Mark as a servant. Ars said that everything would be fine and he would come up with something. Ritsu apologizes and thanks the young man for the bread. Ars asked him to stop. He would never be able to meet someone with such crazy characteristics again. He had to stop him somehow. Suddenly, the young man's stomach begins to rumble again. Ars comes up with something and says that he has an excellent chef who can cook the most delicious dishes. Bread alone is not enough for him. Ritsu turns to Arsu, drooling from his mouth. Ars says that the young man will be able to taste steak, stewed beef, meat pies and even a cake. After a while, the butler met Ars and asked if he was really walking outside again. They were terribly worried. If something happens to him, his head will fly off his shoulders. Ars told Krantz that he was at home. The man looked at the Ritz and said that he was a brand. Ars asked Krantz if he could cook dinner for two. The man asked the young man if he was really that hungry. Ars said that he wanted to eat with a young man whom hello. Krantz started shouting that it was impossible to let such scum into their palace and what Ars was only thinking about. Ars made an innocent face and said that he would starve to death. Krantz was amazed and said that it was sad even when stamps die. When they finished their meal, he would have to leave the palace. After a while, the table was set with excellent dishes. Only one plate was placed in front of the Ritz. The maid said she was very sorry, but she couldn't give him the same amount as Sir Ars. Ars realized that brand discrimination is already rooted in the roots of society. At least everyone he knows thinks that stamps are an inferior race. This is already widespread and it will be difficult to change it, even if he persists in convincing people. Then Ars jumps off his chair and drags him to the Ritz. She also moves all the food plates. The young man sits down next to Ritz and offers him to eat together. Suddenly, a maid ran up to them and addressed the young master. Ars said that the young man next to him is an important guest. The maid bowed and apologized and said that they would serve them both appropriately. After a while, Ritz enjoyed a delicious meal. Ars asked Ritz what he was doing in this city, because he was not a local. The young man replied that he was in a mercenary group. Many members of the group died in the war. In addition, most of the group's leaders died, and it broke up. He wandered where he could and ended up here. Ars thought that he had huge characteristics and must be very capable. The young man asked Ritz if he had joined other mercenary groups. The young man said that it was impossible, since no one would trust a little guy from Mark's race. He has been a member of his band since childhood. Ars said it was just terrible. Suddenly, they were interrupted by a male butler and asked if they had finished eating. 
If that's the case, then he should leave this place immediately. Aras said he couldn't do that, since he brought him here to make him his servant. The man was surprised and asked what he was talking about, because Lord Raven would not spare them. After a while, Aras and Ritsu went to the office of the Lord, Aras's father. The man said that he had listened to his son's story. Then she finishes writing, puts down her pen and asks if he understood correctly what they were saying about Mark. Aras stiffened a little, but nodded positively. The man replied that they could not help him. He had never heard of a stamp being made into a servant, so Aras should get rid of it, and preferably faster. Aras said that Ritsu is very talented. To lose him would be a huge loss for them. The man asked his son to listen to him and said that stamps are low creatures for the people of the Summerfort continent, so he cannot be talented. Aras thought it was another stereotype on their continent, but he can see the characteristics of Ritz and he's just a monster. He can hide a key role in Lambert's development. Aras says he can't vouch for all the kinship of the stamps, but Ritz has talent from God. If his father doesn't believe him, then why doesn't he put him to the test? The man paused, and then asked his son why he was so confident in him. Aras said he realized it when he saw him. The man said it was true, because the young man had already seen Millet's potential. Aras agreed and said that it was just like that time and his intuition tells him that he is an outright talent. The man was silent for a while, and then said that if what his son says is true, and the text passes the writs, then the young man can take him as a warrior. Aras is very happy and thanks his father. Aras thinks he will be happy even if Ritsu is a warrior. Ritz will pass the text without any problems, and his father will make sure of it. Even if he wasn't his servant, he would make an excellent warrior. The man said that the text was simple. He will fight him and if he wins, then he has passed, and if not, then he has not passed. Ars was surprised and told his father that Ritz was only 14 years old and had almost no chance against him. He had talent from birth, because it will be very difficult for someone who is just growing up to defeat a master in this business. The man said that he was talented. Ars began to analyze their characteristics. Father's bravery is 94 and Ritz's is 70. If he had practiced a little more, he could have won, but not now. The man said he would fight in earnest, but would give Ritz a head start. Ars realized that they had a chance with this. He told his father that he understood everything. The man said that they would fight on the training ground. They are walking down the corridor when suddenly Arsa calls Ritz. He asks the young man why he went so far and if it could be sympathy. Ars thinks that he tried so hard to make him his servant that he didn't even explain to him why he wanted it. Ars asked Ritza if he didn't want to be a servant of the Luant family. In that case, he should tell his father to stop. The young man said that he would be happy to become his servant. It's just hard for him to believe it, because wherever he was, he was persecuted because he was from the race of the brand. He held on thanks to his mercenary skills. Ars asked him not to worry about it. If he is still not sure about his choice, then he needs to know that the test will be very difficult. However, he believes in what he sees. Ritsu will be able to do it. Ars will become the lord of this land, and he wants Ritsu to be by his side. The young man was very surprised by Ars's words and, pursing his lips, said that he would do everything he could. After a while, Lord Raven arrives at the training ground. Everyone was very surprised by his appearance, and no one understood what was going on. Raven said he didn't come to practice. Now he will test the skills of the young man who stands next to him. Ritz stood awkwardly behind Lord Raven. The warriors couldn't believe what they saw in front of them. Raven said that according to ours, this young man is very talented. If this is true, then he will make a great warrior. Everyone was surprised that Mark could be talented and it was simply impossible. No one understood what the young master was thinking. Lord Raven said they would use wooden swords. Ritsu agreed, but was very tense. After a while, they got into a fighting stance. Lord Raven said that if Ritsu hits him at least once in three minutes, then victory will be his. No matter how many punches he grabs, the young man will not lose until he gives up. Then he asked Gratz to bring an hourglass. The young man agreed. Ars thought that his father's bravery characteristics were probably the highest in their country. However, if Ritz gets even one hit, they will prevail. Raven said that besides, he hadn't heard the boy's name. He would like to get to know him before the battle begins. The young man said his name was Ritsu Muse. The man introduced himself as the head of the Luant family, Raven Luant. He swears that he will show him his power. The hourglass is turning over. Suddenly, Lord Raven jumps up and makes a jump attack. His gaze is filled with anger. He strikes directly at the Ritz, but the young man dodges, although fear is written in his eyes. Raven struck with his sword, but Ritsu was able to block his attack and was surprised by this huge force. He realized that the Lord's attacks were very fast. Even when he used all his strength, Raven didn't even move. The man attacked the shaking sword of Ritz, but he was able to dodge by using a jump attack. 
Arz realized that his father was very strong. Ritsu is too overwhelmed by his attacks. Then he heard the words of the warriors who were interested in this mark and asked who he was. Even if the Lord had succumbed to them, they would have lost in one blow, and this mark is still standing on his feet. Besides, Lord Raven is attacking with all his might. Arz was thinking about the Ritz. At this moment, the Lord continued to strike the trembling youth. Ritz missed one blow and the wooden sword hit him right in the shoulder. Everyone was surprised, but Ritsu flew away. Arz was very scared, and the man behind him said that after all, this young man would not be able to defeat the strongest swordsman of their country. Ritsu struggled to get up from the ground. Lord Raven asked the young man what was wrong, because he didn't have time for this. Ritsu sighed once more and then began to stretch his arms and said, remembering Arz's words that he wanted Ritsu to be with him so that Lord Raven would not hesitate. Ritsu acquired a very concentrated look. Lord Raven flinched for a moment. Arz thought about how Ritsu's aura had changed. Ritsu went on the attack right at Lord Raven. The man said that his eyes see everything and nothing escapes the gaze of the Lord. Suddenly, Ritsu disappeared from Lord Raven's field of vision. He was very surprised that the young man had disappeared. Suddenly, the Ritz rolled right under Lord Raven's feet. Ars was very surprised that Ritz was right under the Lord. Raven turned around and said with a grin that it was just a trick, so the young man would definitely be on top. Ritz was indeed on top, but right in front of the shining window. The warriors said that Ritsu used the window to blind Lord Raven. Ritsu swung to hit Lord Raven, but the man managed to block his attack with his sword. Ars thought that Ritz had some kind of unexpected attack, and his father's reaction to this blow was very striking. Ritsu jumped to the side and thought about how the Lord was able to stop it at all, because he would not have a second chance. Lord Raven stopped and announced that they were done. Ritsu was very surprised. Everyone was also shocked that perhaps Ritsu was able to hurt Lord Raven. No one understood what kind of brand it was. Raven told Ritz that he had won. As he promised, he would take him as a soldier. Ars thought it was amazing, because Ritsu won. He was very strong against his father. Ars ran up to the Ritz with congratulations and said that he was just great. He turned to his father and thanked him. The man said that as Ars said, he felt his talent through his sword. He will become a very good swordsman in the future. He turned to his son and said that today he realized something. A young man can really see the abilities of others and he may have something special. As he has already said, the ability to see the potential of other people is a critical skill for a lord. However, there is a high probability that the young man may harm himself. He may have problems if he can't control it. Ars realized that his father was right. Even if he gathers talented people, but cannot rein them in, there is a chance that he will get a knife in the back. He must not forget about it. Raven said that. However, right now he needed to think about the war that could start at any moment. It seems to him that the young man has great potential. He could have become a great noble. Then Lord Raven corrects himself and says that he could even become an emperor. Ars asked what he meant. Raven patted his son on the head and said he was just joking. Is it even possible to become an emperor with such a small territory? He's not even sure if the next generation of Luvents will be able to achieve this. The man left, and Ars watched him go. Then a lot of warriors came up to Ritz and started saying that he was great and started asking him where he got such skills from. They asked if the young man wanted to fight him, because they wanted to find out how strong the young man was. Others also joined in and said they wanted to fight him too. Ritsu smiled and apologized, and then said that his hands hurt so much that he couldn't even hold a sword in his hands. The men laughed and said that this was a trick against the Lord and next time they would definitely turn to the young man for advice. Ars thought it looked like everyone had already asked Ritz everything they wanted and so far everything was going great. Still, they took another step in becoming the strongest land. He, like Ritsu, will work hard. After a while, Ars knocked on Ritsu's room and asked him how he liked this room and this suit, if it was too tight for him. Ritsu was embarrassed and was adjusting his suit. He asked if he looked strange. It's just the first time he's worn it. Ars was delighted and said that he was just fine and perfect for the Ritz. Ritsu asked if everything would be fine as long as he lived here. Ars said that everything was fine, because Ritz was also his personal servant. Ritsu agreed and said that he wanted to help him at least a little. However, he asks if he is worthy to be a servant of Mr. Ars. Ars asked him to stop. He said that this is the estate of a lord who owns a small land and Ritz was hired by a warrior, so this is certainly not a dream story. Ritsu said it was a dream story for him. Ars was very surprised. Then Ritsu looked at him and suddenly knelt down. Ritsu turned to Ars and told him that if it wasn't for him, he would already be starving to death on the street. He is very grateful to the young man. He will devote the rest of his life to repay the young man. Ars thought that Ritz would save him from many difficulties without betraying him along the way. 
he foresees such a future. Ars takes Ritz's hand and agrees, saying that he would be only too happy to work with him. The main character's name is Ars Luvent and he is three years old, and he is also the son of a lord. He was an ordinary Japanese citizen, but died and was reborn as an aristocrat in another world. He has an analysis skill that helps him see other people's talent. He can see their potential in the form of statistics. With the help of this power, he was able to see Ritz's talent and since then they have become friends. At this moment, in order to survive in this world, he must use his strength, gathering strong people around to make his land the strongest. A few months after Ritz's arrival, the young man was sitting at his desk reading a book. He heard two maids talking about Mark, who had recently arrived here. Another girl said that she had heard that Lord Raven had made him his warrior. Rumors say that he is very talented. Besides, he seems to be very smart. He understands the meaning of any book the first time. The girls admired him. The girl was happy that they have such a talented Mark next to them and it is very motivating. And besides, he is very handsome. At that moment, Ritsu turned to Arsu and asked if they would study today. Ars agreed and said that he was counting on the young man. Ars thinks that since there have been no battles for a long time, Ritsu has become his teacher. While engaged in self-education, Ritsu greatly increased his characteristics and strategy, and now there is an excellent strategist in their Luant family. After a while, Ritz said that today they would discuss the situation in the Summerfort continent. As he had already told Ars, the Summerfort Empire was created by the unification of the Summerfort continent. Ansel leads the way to another continent. This is a place where other countries come to trade. Gathering all the power, Ansel occupied other kingdoms. Ansel's king, Anazas Baidras, became emperor after capturing all the kingdoms. That was 230 years ago. However, the current Summerfort continent is in decline. The state is corrupt. There are strikes all over the country. As a result, the rulers of the province begin to ignore the empire and develop their autonomy. Ars already knew that the war would start soon, so he would gather strong people and prepare for it. However, it would be better if there were no battles. He is glad that he met Ritza, however. He asks if there is any chance of preventing a war. Ritz said that it is possible to reduce losses if an intelligent person becomes the emperor of the continent. Ars asked if there were any such people in the name of Bidras. Ritz replied that since the current head of the Bidras family is an eight-year-old boy Bidras XII, all power belongs to his vassal but it seems that no power belongs to his only vassal. Other factions are also fighting for power. Ars doesn't think this is a good thing, and then asks if this is called a power struggle in the family. Then he thinks that in Japan, the faction dispute has never really ended. It seems to him that the war will start earlier in the territory of Mizian, where they are located. Ars asked what Ritsu meant. The young man said that the current king of Miliana, Amador Salemachia, is ill and quite old, and will most likely die soon. He has two sons. His eldest son should have easily taken over, but his younger brother seems more reliable and strong. And then the question arises about the future king. If the king dies without choosing a successor, then war will begin. Even if he chooses, the probability of war is still huge, considering that both brothers are aiming for the throne. Ars said it couldn't be. He asks who his father will follow if this happens. Ritz said that it kind of seems like the older brother is more suitable. It's not Lord Raven who chooses who to follow. Ars realized that his father was not one of those who would report anything to the Duke of Mizian. Each state is divided into groups. He found out that Lamberk was in the canal and his father was under the supervision of the head of the canal. His father is in the municipality, but he is not in the state government. All his father's actions depend on a certain major. His analysis may help him choose allies, but something is bothering him. He learned that the war would begin one day, but he did not imagine that it would be so soon. His father is still alive, but he is only three years old and has only the Ritz. If something happens to his father, he wonders if he can win with their current strength. Ritz who said that, however, there is a chance that this will not happen and the opposite will happen. If Ars proves himself in battle, then the Lord will be able to increase his rank, so they should strengthen, and he will be with the young man to protect him. Ars thanked Ritz. He is very glad that the young man is with him. Ritz said they needed to find capable people. Ars and Ritsu will be able to find strong people. Ars agrees and suggests that he gather more talented people. Ritsu added that he would always support the young man. After a while, they come to the training ground. Ars thinks his father has been training hard lately. He wonders if his father knows that war is coming. The man notices his son and asks if he is really going to go to the city today. The young man says that they want to find very strong people. The man understands and says that he actually wanted to ask them to find a good magician. 
the young man asks about the magicians. The man says that magic will be necessary for them in the upcoming battles. They have no magical gift and only a few of his vassals can use magic. The young man thinks about magic and realizes that he has already used magic once. If you cast a spell using this strange device, in which a ball with a red liquid is placed, then it is activated. However, his father said that magic was not for him and this was his last experience. He was so proud when he was able to do it. The man says that he is counting on his son. Ars says he will definitely find capable people. After a while they ride a horse and Ars says that as he expected, Ritsu is very good at riding. If he finds a magic user, then it will bring a huge advantage to them. He will find capable people for the sake of the future of Luvent and Lamberg. Ars and Ritsu arrived in another city to search for magicians in it. Ars was very surprised that this city is just huge. Ritz said that there are about 50,000 people living here. They arrived at the capital of the canal. Ars was surprised that there were 50,000 people here. This is many times more than in their Lamark. He doesn't feel comfortable in this city. Ritz said it was the capital of the canal. Ritz was told that this is the citadel of the canal, where Lord Piles himself lives. There are so many people here that he is sure they will find a capable person. He suggests that the gentleman try his best. Ars says Ritsu is right. They can't go home without finding a good magician. Ars said it looked like a lot of rich people lived here. Ritsu replied that thanks to the large population, the business is certainly booming. Ars thought that one day he wanted to elevate Lamberg to the same level. Ritsu was looking at the map, and Ars suddenly noticed an alley with poor people. Ritsu said it looked like there was a huge square ahead. It seems to him that there will be a lot of people there, so they should go there. Suddenly, he notices Ars, who was watching the alley. He asked what was wrong. Ritsu said that where there are rich people, there will definitely be poor people. The more a city thrives, the stronger the line between rich and poor becomes. Ritz said he understood what Ars wanted to say. Although he has a kind heart, he will not be able to save absolutely everyone. He himself was saved by Ars and it hurts him to say this, but now they can't do anything about it. Ars said that it is. He won't be able to save everyone with his current might. At the beginning of the journey, when he saw a busy street, he thought that this city was incomparable. However, he does not think that this city can truly be like this, as long as there is antagonism between its inhabitants. He wants to create such a place, and even though it's naive, he doesn't want there to be such a division. He believes that there are talents among such people. Ritz said that he was heartily proud to be Ars's servant. Ars asked what she found on the Ritz, but the young man just smiled sweetly. Three hours later, Ars said that there were very few capable magicians here. Although there were nice people, they are not up to it. Ritsu asked Ars if he was okay, because they should take a break. Ars said he was very hungry. Then he feels a pleasant aroma and sees a street with shops selling food. He says everything looks delicious. Then a man calls the young man and asks him if he wants to buy a pet dragon. This is a real dragon egg brought from the northern continent. The young man wonders if this is definitely not a dream and decides, the dragon will be in the form of a pet. He really wanted a dragon for himself. The man says that this is a very rare egg, but she will sell it to the young man for only one silver coin. He asks how it is for a young man. Ars immediately rummages in his backpack and tells him to give him three eggs. Suddenly, he looks to the side where Ritsu has already pointed the blade at the man. Ritz said that he was selling fakes, and then turned to the dealer and asked if he understood what the young man was doing now. Ars asked him to stop. The man shouted about what Ritsu was doing in general. The young man ordered him to listen carefully. Trade with the northern continent was suspended a year ago. Even if the egg is real, it was most likely brought by smugglers. In addition, dragon eggs do not hatch until they are in a hot environment. And the pattern spots are darker than usual and the size of these eggs is also different. These are definitely not dragon eggs. These are the usual eggs of large lizards from Ansel. The man tried to say something, but Ritz ordered him to close his mouth. Thus, he insulted his master so he would immediately finish him off. The man realized that Ritsu was just some kind of psycho. Ars asked Ritz to stop and said he would not buy it. He asked him to be calm in a city like this, and he didn't know, so it's his failure. Ritsu asked Ars for forgiveness and said that he had disobeyed the young man, so he would accept any punishment. Ars said that everything was fine and he was just helping him. Ritsu is usually very calm. He wonders if it will happen again when they try to deceive him again. If he is not more aware, then he will definitely kill someone. Ars invited him to continue. He should study much harder. On the second day of the search for the magician, Ars enjoyed delicious meat on a stick. Yesterday was quite a difficult day, so today it should be fully charged. Ritz fed Arsa and said that it was also very tasty. Ars noticed that they also sell various sweets here. 
He asked the merchant for some sweets, but suddenly his wallet was stolen. Ars said he scared him and the man was probably in a hurry. Ritz told Ars that his wallet had just been stolen. Ars was very scared, and then asked Ritz what they should do. Ritsu took Ars with him and rushed straight to the thief. He said he would catch him quickly, so he asked Ars to hold on tight. Ars was very surprised that this thief was running very fast. The man ran around the alley and then stuck his tongue out at the Ritz. The young man was furious. Ritsu ran into the alley, but there was no one there. Suddenly, Ars shouted that the man was already running from above. Ritsu put Ars on the ground and asked him to give him one minute. Then the young man took out a blade. Ars shouted for Ritsu to stop, but the young man replied that everything would be fine. Ritz is hurled by the blade, and he plunges into the wall and grabs the thief's cloak with him. Ritz then throws several more blades, capturing almost the entire area of the cloak. The thief was chained to the wall. Ritz climbed up the stairs and ordered the thief to return his master's wallet right now. Suddenly, the girl grinned. She jumped out of her cloak and Ars noticed that it was just a little girl. She stuck her tongue out at Ritz again. Ars didn't believe that it was a little girl. He rushed right after her, but suddenly three unknown men appeared in front of him and around the girl. Ritsu approached Arsu and asked what had happened. One of the men called the girl useless trash and said she was trying to escape. They hit her and the girl fell to the ground. The man said that she was useless and would have to be carried on her back. Suddenly, Ars grabbed one man by his clothes and asked him to stop. The man asked about whose child it was. Ars shouted that it was too cruel to offend a girl until she lost consciousness. The man rushed at Ars with his fists. However, his punch stopped the Ritz. A young man with an evil look ordered the man to take his dirty hands away from his master. The man rushed straight to the Ritz with the words that he had confused the coast. After a while, Ritz said that he had taken care of them. Ars said she didn't even doubt it. Ars turned to the girl and asked her if she was okay. He thought that she was really very small and she was about 12 or 13. Her whole body was bruised, and there were obvious handcuff marks on her hands. Ars said it looked like someone was stalking her, and then asked if everything was okay now. He decided to analyze it. The girl's name was Charlotte Vraze and she was 11 years old. The girl was very brave, but her ambitions were almost at zero. All of her stats were also at the D rank level, but her magic was S rank. Ars was very surprised that her magic score was S rank. With a maximum leadership of 92 and bravery of 116. She was only 11 years old, and she had the courage of his father. However, after observing the performance of the warriors and the Ritz, he came to one conclusion. Based on it, combat power is made up of multiplying the indicators of bravery and combat characteristics. In other words, it doesn't matter how big the numbers are if your abilities are low ranked. Even if she has high numerical bravery scores, most of her abilities have a D score. However, her level of magic is insane. Ritz ordered the girl to return the purse to his master. Ars interrupts him and asks if the girl would like to become his vassal. Ritsu was very surprised and asked what the young gentleman was talking about at all. Ars told Ritz that she has a very great talent in magic and no one else is suitable. The girl grinned and said that the young man must be joking and be a vassal of some child, but she would rather die. Ars was very surprised by her answer. Ars asked why the girl did not want to become his vassal. She replied that she just didn't like it. Ars said that she had great potential in mastering magic and could the girl lend him her power. The girl asked again about magic and said that she had never used it. Ars said he understood. Then he talked about the girl's clothes and asked if her life was not difficult. If she became his vassal, he would be able to provide her with food and shelter and the girl could live this life better. They were born with a silver spoon in their mouth and it's probably a good life when you get everything so easily. They always look down on them. She asks if the young man wants to use her to protect his rich and carefree life. Ars said he wasn't in that category. One day he will ensure that everyone can live an equal life, for this reason he wants the girl to help him. The girl asked about one day and asked Ars when that day would come. Someone who was born in a shirt would not understand them. She asks if he has ever thought about what he will eat tomorrow. Every new day is a severe test for them, and they do not live, but survive. The young man says that one day everything will change, but she does not understand when it will come. She asks if the young man really wants her to become his vassal and solve his problems. She asks you to stop fooling her, and she doesn't want to be a vassal of a man like him. Ars was amazed. Ritz said that he understands the girl's pain, but stealing from others is not good, so she must return his master's wallet. The girl threw the purse and said that they had just helped her, so she did not want to be in debt. The young man once again notices the marks on her hands. Ars asks what kind of people they were and it seems they were fiercely pursuing her. 
The girl said that they were dealers in prohibited goods. She once tried to sneak into a nobleman's warehouse, but was caught and sold to these fiends. Even though she managed to escape, they're still chasing her, so maybe she's a valuable commodity to them. Ars and Ritsu looked at the girl in silence, and she said that she was a beauty. Ars said that why hadn't she left the city yet, if she wanted to run away from them so badly, because she should get out of here as soon as possible. The girl said she couldn't. Ars asked why. Suddenly, a scream was heard, and a crowd of children ran straight to Charlotte. They asked where the girl had been, because she had been gone for three whole days. They were alone and very hungry. Ritsu asked about who these kids were. Charlotte said they were all like her. They are orphans who have to survive from day to day. She can't leave these children. Ars noticed her sad look and said, biting his lip that he was giving up. He takes the money from Ritz and hands it to Charlotte, telling her to take it anyway. Ritsu was surprised. Charlotte looked at it and asked if it could be that this was also some kind of trick. She won't thank him for that. Ars said it was the girl's wish. Charlotte chuckled and said that the young man was very strange. Ars and Ritsu watched the girl go. Ars said he couldn't take the girl with him. After a while, the young man sat on the balcony of the hotel and watched the night city. Ritsu came up to him. The young man turned to the young gentleman and said that it was cold outside, so he offered to go inside. Ars agreed. Ritsu looked at him and said that he was in a similar situation. He understands what the girl meant then. Ars pursed his lips. Ritsu continued and said that this world is unfair to the lower class. Most of them are puppets of nobles, which is why she reacted so negatively to the young man. However, the gentleman is different, and he understands this perfectly well. Ars said he took everything for granted, which is why he annoyed her. No wonder she was angry. He really wanted to create such a beautiful and magnificent city, but maybe he was too idealistic. The young man squeezed the bars of the barrier and said that everything she said was true. Ritsu was looking at him, but suddenly they heard the screams of children. Ars and Ritsu ran out to them and asked what had happened. The children recognized them and shouted that Charlotte had been caught. The children enjoyed the delicious food and said that they had not eaten so much for a long time. One girl asked Charlotte if she was sure she wouldn't eat. The girl said that everything was fine and they should eat more. Charlotte thought that this money would last for two whole weeks. Now she won't have to wander around looking for food for a while. Then she heard a knock on the door. Three men who had recently been beaten by Ritsu entered the room. They began to offend the girl because she ran away from them. They were tense because no matter how much they offended her, she didn't even shed a tear. Suddenly another man came into the room and said that the case had burned out and they should not touch her face because the buyer would be furious. Then they noticed her bag of money and said she was a good thief. They began to lift the heavy bag. The girl tore out the bag and ran to the exit. She thought it didn't matter what happened to her, but at least for the sake of the children, she had to save the money. Another man attacked her from behind and told her to remember that she would never be able to escape again. Even if she can escape, nothing will change, because the outcome will always be the same. Her life is over, so if she has any complaints, then she can cry to her parents who abandoned her at the bottom. The girl wondered why she was born at all. However, one of the men flew into the doorway. Ritz burst into the room. The men recognized him immediately, but they were immediately beaten by Ritsu. Then Ars came into the room, and Charlotte was very surprised. Ars came up to her and asked if she was okay. The girl didn't understand why he was here. Then the main man asked who these two people were and breaking into someone else's house like that was very bad. Ars asked if the man was really a dealer in prohibited goods. The man recognized Arsa as a nobleman and asked why he even cared about such things. Ars asked the man to let this girl go. The man said that he did not understand what the young man was talking about at all, because this girl was her servant and his goods. They, the aristocrats, are constantly acquiring them. Ars said he doesn't do that. They have brought her to such a state that she simply cannot look straight into a person's eyes. He was thinking about it, but suddenly realized something. He realized that her ambitions were a unit. The man did not understand what the young man was talking about at all. Ars said that ambition plays a very important role, because it is an indicator of how much you do not intend to give up and move forward. It is also an indicator of his hope for the future. It's all because of that date, that's why she's so unsure of her future and isn't it sad. Charlotte continued to look at Ars. The man laughed and asked what the young man was talking about, because she was just a servant. Servants have no future and isn't that obvious. Ars asked what was the point. Adults should protect the younger generation. How can a man treat a child like that? The girl did not understand what was wrong with the young man. Ars said that she should make the decision herself, not the man. The girl was surprised what was wrong with him, since he was saying such things. She doesn't even remember the last time she cried. She doesn't see the point in crying and it won't help her in any way. 
she stopped dreaming a long time ago because fate had already outstripped her peace on the chessboard. No one and nothing could hurt her because she just turned off her emotions. Tears are the lot of the weak. If you are weak, then you are dead. She chose only to think about how to survive. However, even so, she didn't understand why she was crying now. At that moment, the young man said that they were doing whatever came into their heads. The man said that was enough and he was lenient with them because they were nobles, but he was already fed up with them. Ours, Ritz and Charlotte were surrounded by men. The girl thought that this was not good and if it continued, so she shouted that they had better leave. Ours said that everything was fine and she should just wait. The girl did not understand what the young man meant. Ours will ask Ritz if he will deal with them. The young man replied that, of course. Suddenly, one of the men rushed into the fight and asked what they were whispering about. They don't seem to understand the current situation. Suddenly, Ritsu grabbed one of the men by the throat and pressed very hard. Everyone was amazed at what they saw now. Ritsu called them clueless and asked if they understood who they were running into. He will not spare a single soul who has offended his master. Blood was dripping from Ritz's blade, and next to his feet were all the attacking men who called him a monster. Ritz is very scary in anger. Ritz came to his senses at one point and asked if it was really over. Charlotte didn't understand why this guy was so strong. The man was startled and shouted at the other man to come here. Suddenly, a huge man appeared in the room, drinking something from a mug. He said it was very noisy here. Charlotte was amazed that this man was incredibly huge. The man said that this big guy was a captain of the channel infantry, but he was kicked out because of disrespectful behavior. The man said that all the alcohol had already run out and he wanted more. The man said he could drink as much as he wanted if he dealt with these people. Charlotte shouted to Ars that this guy was very dangerous. Ars turned to her and asked her not to worry. The man was surprised that the young man had defeated these guys. He's kind of ashamed of beating up the boys. Ritz said it would be better if they took care of their health. The man grinned and, clenching his fist, told Ritz that she would break his neck. The man made a punch but missed. Ritz suddenly appeared behind him, who said that he was acting too slowly. He struck him from behind and the man flew straight into the wall. He stood up, but Ritz was immediately right in front of him. Charlotte was very surprised, and Ars said that Ritz and this man were made of their different dough. Ritz hit the man and he fell down again. The main man said that it just couldn't be. At that moment, Ritsu turned right towards him, and he was very scared. The man asked if they understood what they had done. Their business is closely connected with Lord Byers himself. Ars said that he knows and that's why he wants to pay, because he wants to buy Charlotte. The man asked what the young man was chalking up, because this money was not enough. Ritsu interrupted him and said that the trade in prohibited goods is widespread all over the world and has its own trade routes. But the man knows this very well. He asked what the young man meant by that. Ritz said that they would take her with them anyway. However, in this case, the man would lose his face since he had disrupted his deal with the original client. If that's the case, then the man could sell it to them for a higher price. He thinks it would be a good reason to break the original deal. The man tensed. Ritz said that if he had any complaints, they could solve everything in a bad way. The man said that the young man persuaded him and he agreed. Ritz said that he was so glad that the man got into their situation. He thinks that's what they agreed on. The man said that there is so much noise here because of some third-rate syllable. If they're done, they should get lost, because he has no desire to deal with them. Ritz said that then he wished them good luck and they would see each other next time. The man was very scared by Ritz's words. Ars thanked Ritz, and the young man replied that he was very proud to be Ars's servant. The main character thought that he could rely on the Ritz and everything went like clockwork. Ars then turns to Charlotte and says they need to go, and then he asked if Charlotte could walk. They came out of the building and said it looked like it was morning. Then Ars turned to Charlotte. The girl said that there is one place she would like to visit. After a while, they climbed some kind of mountain. Ars asked if it was still far away, because he couldn't walk anymore. Ritsu turned to the gentleman and asked how he was doing. After a while, Charlotte said that they had come. Suddenly, a beautiful view of the city opened up in front of them. Ours was very surprised. Charlotte said it was an amazing view. This is her secret place. When she admires this view, it seems that all problems are solved and tomorrow will go well. That's why she visits this place sometimes. She really likes looking at the view. Ours said he wanted to ask Charlotte one thing. He asked why the girl wanted to show them this place. Charlotte said that the young man talked about wanting to create a city where everyone would be equal. The girl asked why the young man wanted to do this. Ours said that he really likes children. Charlotte was overwhelmed. She said that he was a child himself. Ars said it was true. When everything goes to hell, only slightly seeing the baby's smile, he acquires new strength to move forward. Therefore, he believes that the smile of children is filled with hope. To have hope, to look at the future with a bright eye. 
there is an unknown power in their words. He likes to watch them grow up, prolonging the difficulties along the way, to look forward to the future with hope, to want something more and explore something new. He believes that this aura of hope will lead the city to unprecedented development. For this reason, he wants to achieve such an atmosphere. Children shouldn't have to suffer like this, and therefore they both don't have to worry, because he will give people new hope. Then Ars realizes what he just said and says that he did not intend to lecture them. He apologizes very much. What he meant was that he wanted to create an environment where everyone would be equal and happy. Charlotte said that she agreed and the young man could use her. Ars was very surprised and asked about those orphans. Charlotte replied that that was why she agreed. It's for them too. As the young man said, she wants the children to find this very hope too. Ritz said that, in that case, they should test the girl's potential. He holds out the pendant and tells her to use it. Ars called the young man, but he said that he did not doubt his master, but he just wanted to see what she was capable of. How great is her ability to master magic? The girl agrees and says that she understood. However, this is her first time, meaning it's her first time using magic, so she can't even imagine it. Ritsu says he will show her everything. Ars thinks that to be honest, he is not particularly knowledgeable about magic, not to mention that he has never met people with such a rank of magic. He is very interested in what she is capable of. Charlotte looked at her hand, clenched her fist, and then she held out her hand. Suddenly, a sphere appeared right in front of her hand. This sphere filled with some kind of liquid and suddenly there was a huge explosion. All the people in the city were surprised by this, and especially Charlotte, Ars and Ritz. Charlotte looked at her hand in surprise, and then she smiled and asked Ars and Ritz if they had seen it. Ars shouted that it was just amazing and then asked if Ritz had seen it. Ritsu was just surprised and said that it just couldn't be. Then Charlotte said that she was interested in one question. Would the Rs really provide her with food and shelter? The young man agreed and said that besides that he would even have a monthly salary. Charlotte asked if the young man could transfer all this money to those children. They won't last long without her. If she had food and shelter, that would be enough. Ars agreed and said that let it be so and he had to say something else. The young man smiled and said that he was counting on the girl. She smiled and bent her knee, and then said that she would do everything possible to fulfill his dream. The young man asked if it was really the same Charlotte. The girl said that maybe it was better before. She will remain better than herself, since she is like an older sister to a young man and it suits her very well. Ars then smiles and says he thinks they're done here, and then asks if there could be something wrong. Charlotte starts to squirm in place and said that she apologizes for the money, and besides, she thanks him for saving her. Ars says that everything is fine and Ritsu asks her to be more careful next time. Then Ars says that he is very hungry. We'll have to wait until they get to their house. Charlotte talks about the future and says that she would never have thought that she would serve someone who is younger than her age. Ritz says that he has a great future ahead of him. After a while, Charlotte says goodbye to the orphan children. Ritsu and Charlotte are two strong friends of ours. The potential of the Luant family has clearly increased. However, he is a little uneasy. Even if they are so strong, he is just an ordinary person who leads them. He's wondering if he can get stronger. What if he gets stabbed in the back if he doesn't live up to their expectations? However, he promised that he would create a mighty city. He will give it his all. Three years later, Ars was sitting in his office and studying hard. The maid entered Ars's room and told him that she had brought tea. The young man thanked her. The young man was already six years old. The girl said that Raven had already arrived home. Ars was very happy and ran to meet him. He went out into the stairwell and greeted his father. The man said that he had arrived home. Ars was so glad that his father had returned safely. It's been three years since they adopted Charlotte. The number of uprisings has increased, and one battle has already taken place in Mizian, where they are now located. Then there will only be more of them. In addition, their kingdom currently has a territorial issue with the neighboring kingdom of Sates. The channel where their Lamberk is located is located in the western mountainous part of Mizian. In other words, because of the overlapping borders, Ars's father is also involved in this battle. It seems he's been in battle five times in the past year. However, the mood of the people is not gloomy at all. Ars asked his father how the fight went. The man said it was a resounding victory and this time their princess was in the lead role again. Charlotte told Ars that she was back. The young man greeted her. Charlotte showed unprecedented skill on the battlefield, which led their territory to a huge development. His father had always been against women taking part in battles. He thought it was just nonsense. However, as soon as he saw Charlotte's abilities, he immediately recognized Charlotte. He said he would like the girl to lend him her power. The warriors said that, as expected of the princess, she was simply adorable, as always. Princess is Charlotte's nickname. 
like a shining star, she quickly became famous. She became feared as the strongest magician on the battlefield and was nicknamed the Fiery Princess of the Louvents. The current value of Charlotte's bravery is 101. An ordinary opponent would never be able to cope with it. In addition, the leadership points have risen to 73. Because of her high command value, she is the leader of the Magic Squad. The Lewent family now has two squads. The Magic Squad stands on a par with the Infantry Squad, which is led by Arz's father. It seems that other families quite often offer her to move in with them, but she does not pay any attention to them. The young man is sure that a person like Charlotte will stay with them, even if she is offered fabulous money. He is really very grateful to Charlotte. It's hard to imagine that thanks to the unprecedented skill of one person, the situation can change so much. After all, abilities play a key role here. Charlotte looked at ours and asked why he opened his mouth, because it looks very creepy. The warriors were surprised that Charlotte was talking to her master in such a tone. Ritz came into the room and told Charlotte that they had a good job. Thanks to Charlotte's unsurpassability, Ritz doesn't have to be on the battlefield. Still, he dedicates himself to his training. Considering Ritsu's capabilities and abilities, he starts to worry that he's getting too hung up on it. Ritsu said that there is no more honorable job than teaching him. In any case, if Ritz decides to participate in the battles, the enemy will have no choice but to request help from the allies. In addition, he has become so popular in the house that the maids have created a whole fan club, so it's better for him to stay here anyway and Ritz explains everything many times better than any tutor. Thanks to everyone's efforts, the Lewent family is definitely moving in the right direction. Besides, something else happened. Ars's family has two more children. Ars enjoyed the fact that they were incredibly cute. The maid was also delighted that they were very cute. The maid said they looked very much like Mr. Ars. She hopes they will be just as capable. Ars told the girl not to worry, because they will become the mainstay of the Luvent family in the future. After all, they have incredible characteristics. His brother Kratz has an excellent limit of leadership and bravery, like his father, and even an S-rank infantry, which is just perfect. What is also surprising is the height of ambition. Having such an aspiration is commendable. And Ren has a high indicator of strategy and policy. She may not be a warrior, but she will be an excellent strategist. Although they are still babies, they have very good potential. He's the older brother. It's already too big for a playmate, but they won't be bored. He is very interested in what they will grow up to be. They were wonderful friends in a new life nearby. He will continue to try his best because he has to protect everyone. Ars says that then he will go to his room. The maid was surprised that he was so soon. As an older brother, he should study harder. After a while, Ritz wakes up Arsa behind a stack of books. The young man asks what he missed. Ritsu says he has good news and maybe they can spot more talented people. In fact, in these three years, he has not met anyone suitable anymore. It seems really hard to find people with S-rank abilities. He was probably very lucky to meet Ritz and Charlotte. The young man asked who these people were. Ritsu said it looked like a family of Keisha hunters had recently moved to one of the villages. Two of the three brothers are incredibly strong, so it's clear that in the future they will surely be worthy warriors on the battlefield. So why don't they take a look at them? Ars was glad that there were two of them at once. He ordered us to go straight on the road immediately. At that moment, the two brothers were rejoicing over the caught prey, but there was a little boy sitting by the tree, who was obviously very upset. After a while, the heroes set out on their way. Ars ran up to the horse and said that they were counting on her today. Ritsu smiled sweetly at the young gentleman. Ritsu said that Keisha's family of hunters lives near the forest on the outskirts of the city. He doesn't think it will take long to get to them. Ars said it was great. Then someone called the young man. He looked up and saw Charlotte on a tree branch, eating a sandwich. The girl asked the young man where he was going. Ars replied that it looked like he would be able to recruit a couple of capable people who had recently moved to their city. Charlotte said she didn't know about it. The girl said, chewing on the food, that she would accompany Ars because she was not busy with anything today. Ritsu told her to stop and asked what the girl meant. Does the girl want to say that he is not worthy to accompany Mr. Ars? The girl grinned and said that it could be so. Then she said that it was exactly the case. She will be able to protect him better than the young man and asks if he has forgotten about her nickname received on the battlefield. Ritsu replied that he was proud to be Mr. Ars's teacher. He had been fighting on the battlefield long before the girl joined the Luant family. He firmly points out that the girl is not his equal. Ars watched them in panic and tried to figure out why they were suddenly acting like this. Charlotte said that she would accompany the young man, and Ritsu insisted that he would do it. Ritz shouted that the girl still lacked skill. In addition, the clothes she wears entirely do not match the style of the Luvent family. 
Ars shouted for them to stop and asked why everything kept coming down to this. He tells them to just spend it together. Even though he said that, he didn't know that everything would turn out so that the three of them would ride the same horse. Charlotte said they still hadn't reached it and the Ritz was slowing them down. The young man replied that it was all because of Charlotte, because she was fat. Charlotte said it was a lie. Even if you compare her weight with ours, it will definitely be lower than the average adult. After a while, Ritz said that if you follow the map, then this place is right here. They should walk. Then Ars heard some rustling in the bushes. He turned around and saw a huge boar there. The beast rushed straight at the young man and he screamed in fear. In an instant, Charlotte appeared in front of him, who had already started activating magic, as well as Ritz, who took out a blade and stood in a fighting stance. Suddenly, the boar was pierced by a long arrow and fell without signs of life. Charlotte, Ritsu and Ars were very surprised by this. Charlotte asked what it was, and then the three of them heard someone's voice from the bushes. The two young men were smiling and looking at each other. One of them said that he had said that this bow was very good. Another young man said that, as expected from his brother, but next time he would not give in to him. Ars saw these guys and said that the shot was very good. The brothers noticed people near the boar. They came over and apologized, saying they hadn't noticed them, and then asked if they were okay. Ars said they helped them. The young man replied that they were just hunting, and then asked what they were doing in the forest. Ritz said they were looking for a family of Keisha hunters. They are interested in two of their sons. Charlotte added that they were lost because of Mr. Who knows exactly the right way. The brothers looked at each other and said that they were just the same from this family. Another young man said that his name was Gatos and he was an older brother, and next to him was his younger brother named Marx. Ours was very surprised. Gatos's bravery is 67 and Marx's bravery is 65, which is pretty good. Gatos's infantry is a rank, and Marx's archery is also a rank. They complement each other pretty well, as Gatos is good at melee combat and Marx is good at ranged combat. The guys, of course, are weak in strategy and politics, but they are simply excellent warriors. The rumors were true. The number of battles has increased recently, so they need guys like that. Gatos told them to make themselves at home and sit down at the table and enjoy the meal. Ours thought they were very hospitable and thanked them. After a while, the table was set with wonderful dishes of meat, vegetables and delicious fresh bread rolls. Charlotte and Ars were amazed by these goodies. The brother's father said they were very surprised that the son of the Lord himself decided to visit them. He regrets that he cannot provide them with something better. Ars said that everything was fine. Gatos said it was wild boar meat. They are quite difficult to catch due to the fact that they are quite fast, but the taste of meat is simply divine. Charlotte enjoyed the delicious meat and Ritz said that she was a girl and asked where her manners were. Then the man asked why they decided to visit them. Ars replied that his sons were quite talented, so he would like to offer them to become warriors of the Luvent family. Everyone was very surprised, and the father of the family asked if this was really the case. He could not believe his fears that the Lord's son himself was inviting his sons. He says that he is very proud. He turns to his sons and says that he is very happy for the two of them and they have said themselves that they want to become warriors. The sons agreed and said they would try their best. The young man said that he, Gatos, was good at close combat, and Marx added that he was good with a bow, and he was very glad that he would be able to act under their command. Ars says he is very pleased to meet you. Ritsu added that the gentleman has a diamond eye. The father of the family offered to arrange a festive party. Ars replied that it was a good idea. The man said that Ars was still the son of the Lord himself. He's a very capable guy compared to his youngest son, Roselle. They are about the same age. Ars asked about Rosel and asked if the man really had another son. The man agreed and said that he was the white crow in their family. He will be five years old this year, but he doesn't have any abilities. Suddenly, the door creaked and a little boy came out with a piece of cloth. Charlotte noticed him and asked if he was the one in question. The man was surprised and asked Rosel where his manners were, because the Lord's son decided to visit them. He asked his son what he was doing here. Charlotte said it looked like he had peed in his bed. Rosal felt awkward. The man was surprised and said that how many times he would pee in bed. Roselle didn't know what to say. Ritsu told Charlotte that he was very different from those two. Charlotte replied that she felt sorry for the guy. He must have an inferiority complex. She laughed and asked how you can pee in bed, because you need to clean your pants every time. At that moment, Ars looked at Rosal with an analysis. He had high characteristics of maximum leadership, strategy and policy. His eloquence ability reached S rank. Ars was very surprised by what he saw. Ritsu asked the gentleman if he was okay. Ars was surprised by Rosel's intelligence. 109 is simply staggering. His strategy points can be said to be the highest in all of Summerfort. 
His bravery is quite low, but the points of strategy and politics are incredibly high. He is only five years old now. The man said he was sorry because Roselle is not as good as his older brothers. Ars turned to Mr. and said that he wanted Roselle to come to him. Everyone was surprised. The man said that it was better for the young man not to mess with Roselle. It will bring him more than just unnecessary trouble. Ars said it wasn't true. He turns to Roselle and asks if he wants to go with them. Roselle started crying and shouted if Ars really meant him. He doesn't want to become a vassal and he doesn't want to die. He refuses. Ars thought it was happening again. Ritz said it was a very familiar scene and he had seen it somewhere before, and then he looked at Charlotte. Roselle continued to shout that he would never become a vassal. Ars, Ritsu and Charlotte were very surprised by the young man's behavior. The man shouted at his son so that he would not dare to shout at the Lord's son. Ars tried to stop him and said that everything was fine. The man said that he did not know what was on Roselle's mind and asked the young man if he was really confident in him. Roselle is a physically weak child. He is not even able to chop firewood, so the man does not think that he is suitable for ours. Ours realized that for Roselle's father, only physical strength indicators are important. He looked at Roselle and asked if that was really the case. In a world where food and resource extraction skills are important, political and strategic abilities have become devalued. In other words, not everyone understands the real potential of this boy. Ours turned to Mr. and said that Roselle was different from the others and he was actually good in other industries. The man said that he was quite quick-witted and eloquent, but not capable of much. Ours said that, however, he would be quite useful to them. And for the same reason, Roselle has to go with them. Roselle was very scared. Ours continued to hold out his hand to him. According to Rosal's impressions, Ritz said that he would show this frail man where the crayfish hibernate. Charlotte said there was another servant to boot. Roselle was very scared. He apologized and ran away. Roselle's father shouted at him to stop. Gatos apologized and said that Roselle was quite shy. Ritsu replied that everything was fine. Marx added that they are ready to become excellent warriors for the good of Roselle. Gatos said that Roselle has been acting like this since her mother died. He took after his mother more and is distinguished by his gentleness, but they took after their father more and they got his strength from him. That's why they take care of him all the time. He became withdrawn after his mother's death. They are also to blame for the fact that he has become like this, so they try to protect him from harm. Charlotte said it wasn't okay. She asks if they're really going to babysit him for the rest of their lives. Their mother has passed away, and they are preparing for the impending war. She doesn't think they can always protect him. They're messing with him too much. Of course, it's not for him to talk about it. Ritz said he agreed with that. Ars thought that it was true. They were interrupted by a man who said it was completely his fault. The man said that in fact, his wife had always been involved in raising children and he did not know how to raise them properly. He only scolded them. The three of them often went hunting together and Roselle often stayed at home alone. He is sure that he is the only one to blame for this, so he is very sorry. Ars thought that everyone in the family was quite kind and took care of Roselle. It's all a misunderstanding. The problem is that it will be difficult for them to perceive Roselle's real potential. It's such a loss. Ars said he would be back right away and wanted to check on Roselle. Ars walks into Roselle's room and apologizes, and then asks if he's interrupting. Roselle gets scared and grabs her book. Ars apologizes and says he didn't mean to scare him. He just wanted to apologize to him. Roselle began to tremble and hold on to the book. Ars notices this and asks if he likes to read books. Roselle agreed and said that there was only one book in their house. His mother used to read this book to him as a child. He is not capable of anything, but when he reads a book, he begins to immerse himself in another world and forgets about all the problems. He feels more free in the world of the book. Ars silently watched the young man, and then called his name. He asked the young man if he would like to visit his library. Roselle asked if there could be a lot of books there. Ars agreed and said that Roselle could read as much as she wanted. Roselle shouted hysterically that the young man wanted to recruit him with books so that he could not refuse. Ars said that this was not the case. He thought that the young man would enjoy reading books. Roselle thought about it, and then agreed and said that he was ready to accept Ars's offer if he could use the library. Ars said he was very happy and hoped Roselle would like it there. Roselle said he wouldn't go anywhere without his brothers, who will protect him if not them. After a while, at the mansion, Ritz was disturbed by Arsa and said that it seemed that the brothers from the Keisha family had already arrived. Ars agreed. Ars was coming down the stairs and heard a scream. Rosal was attacked by Arsa's pet, a winged dog. The young man screamed and begged for salvation. Charlotte said it was just a dog. 
Ars greeted Rosal and his brothers. The older brothers saw the men in armor and thought that they were warriors and had very good equipment. Ars said that if they wanted, the captain of the magic squad could show them where the barracks were. Charlotte asked about herself in the tour. The older brothers were very surprised that Charlotte was the captain. Charlotte said they might be worth something. Then they tell them to go. Roselle was scared and asked if they would really leave him alone. Ars told Rosal that he was the one who wanted to visit the library. Ars shows the door and says that this is where the library is. The door opens and they enter a very large library. Ars asked if it wasn't impressive. Books from all over Mizian are collected here. Roselle can read as much as she likes. He has to attend to his studies, so he leaves him. If he wants something, he can contact the Ritz. Roselle was very surprised. After a while, Ars was very surprised that he fell asleep again. Ars looked at his watch and realized that it was already 5 o'clock and 3 whole hours had passed. He is very curious how he is and if he really fell asleep too. He ran into the library and turned to Ritz, asked how Roselle was. Ritz said that everything was fine. He pointed at Roselle and said that he had fallen asleep very soundly. Ars said he was too. He wants to sleep when he reads books. Ritz said it wasn't like that at all. Roselle has read a huge number of books. He tired himself out so much that he fell down and fell asleep. Ars was very surprised by this. Ritsu told the gentleman that his sharp eye was indeed sharp. This guy is just a real monster. Ars was surprised by the large number of books on the floor and hadn't it only been three hours. Ritz gave a positive response. When Roselle first started reading, he was so immersed in the book that he didn't even hear his voice. He not only reads quickly, but also assimilates what he reads with absolute precision. In addition, when he learns something new, he immediately delves into the topic. Ars says that if he learns about something new, he will decide to strengthen his knowledge by reading about hundreds more different details. Ritz said it was a terrifying talent. Ars thought that Ritsu, whose intelligence is considered quite high in their continent, was simply amazed. As he thought, Roselle's talent is simply terrifying. The time he takes to sleep should not burn out. He must make the most of this young man. After a while, Roselle wakes up and asks in horror where he is. Ars wished him good morning and said that the young man was in the bedroom. They brought him here when he fell asleep reading books. Ars said Roselle was incredible. To read so many books in such a short period of time and it's just amazing. Roselle said that reading books is a useless activity. It won't help hunting or chopping firewood. In his house, this skill is simply useless. That's why his father and brothers think that reading books is a useless activity. Then the Roselle brothers entered the room. They apologized for being so late, but it's time for them to get back. Ars greets the brothers and asks them how they like the estate. Charlotte said that these guys are not shy. Everyone was delighted with their abilities. Roselle's brother asked if he was okay and if he had caused them any trouble. Ars said Roselle was just great. He has read so many books in this short period of time. The young man said that Roselle does this at home. However, he does not know how to read books. He just looks at the words. It's funny enough. Ars was very surprised and asked if Roselle really couldn't read. The young man replied that only their mother could read, but this skill was not particularly important for them. Hunters, so they did not worry about it. Ars said, surprised, that Rosal had recently read books, as if he had been able to read all his life. The young man was very surprised and said that this simply could not be. He asked Rosal if he could read. Rosal said that of course he could read. The brothers were very surprised by this and asked how the young man learned this. He learned from his mother when he was little. When she read a book to him, he memorized the sound of her voice and tried to match them with the letters written on the book. That's how he learned to read. Everyone was incredibly surprised by this. Ars wondered if Roselle had really learned to read himself and if it was possible. The brothers were also surprised and asked how he remembered it, because he was only three years old. Roselle said he remembers almost everything from the moment he was born. The brothers were very surprised. Then there was a knock on the door. Ars invited me to come into the room. It was the maid who apologized for the intrusion. The girl said that she wanted to give them a certificate stating that the brothers are now the official warriors of the Lewin family. Lord Raven himself is impressed by their skills. She handed the certificates to the brothers. They exchanged glances and turned to Lord Ars with a request. They asked if they could start serving only at the beginning of winter. The young man asked what these conditions were about. The young man replied that it was quite difficult to survive in winter. Wild boars are quite fast and difficult to catch when they go into hibernation. It turns out that they are leaving their native home for the first time, and only their father and Roselle will remain at home. They would like to catch more wild boars by the beginning of winter. He's afraid to leave them alone. Roselle was very saddened. Ars said that, in that case, their Roselle would help to catch them. Roselle's older brother said he was very weak physically. 
Ours said they didn't have to hunt them. Ritz thought about the trap. The brothers did not understand what traps Ritz and Roselle were talking about. Roselle said that a trap is when different tricks and tricks are used to catch prey. This game technique came from other continents. It was written in a book he had recently read. The older brother said that if you look at it that way, it's pretty convenient. Ours wondered if they really didn't know about the traps. It seems that education is very lame in their continent. Ours turned to Rosal and said that in this world, it's not just power and strength that decide. His brain is his strength. He is confident that his father will recognize his abilities if he can build a competent trap. Ours asked Rosal why he shouldn't try. Roselle hesitated a bit, but the brothers told him to just try. The older brother still doesn't fully understand what his talent is, but he worried about him so often that he used to give him his time. If he had known about his potential earlier, perhaps he wouldn't have had to suffer so much. They apologized to him. However, they will support him anyway, so he has to show them what he is worth. Roselle said he was afraid to talk about it before because he thought they would consider him useless, but he really wants to help. He says in tears that he really wants to try. Everyone was smiling and looking at the cute Roselle. Then they decide to solve the problem then. Ours says that, in that case, they can invite Rosal tomorrow to discuss what kind of trap to make. Ours thinks that it would be better to dig a hole in the ground. They could have stretched a rope between the trees. Any animal that tries to walk between them will fall into a trap or something like that. Ritsu asks Roselle what he thinks. Roselle says he thinks it will be salty. Perhaps a person will fall into the trap by mistake. The chances of catching anything are not great. He doesn't think they'll catch more than just hunting in this way, so he doesn't see the point in using such a trap. Ritz said he thinks the same way. Ours said that then they would discuss it tomorrow. Roselle said they had a couple of ideas. Everyone was very surprised. Roselle was a little scared and said it didn't matter. Ours asked him to tell them what he had come up with. Roselle agreed and took out a notebook with a pen from his bag. He said he didn't know how easy it would be to catch them. However, he drew a diagram and said that the trap would be like this. Ours asked how it works. Roselle explained that in a book he had read before, it said that wild boars rush at yellow things. They can build a yellow aviary to lure any wild boar passing by. The doors can be pushed from the outside, but to get out from the inside, they need to be pulled. This trap is not dangerous for people, and he is sure that if they enlarge the enclosure, they will be able to catch more than one boar, but it is so simple. The brothers asked if Roselle was really talking about using the instincts of wild boars. He's just incredible. Ritz said he had a few questions. How long can the door hold them? If it is too unreliable, it will break, and if it is too strong, it will be difficult for the boar to knock it out, and it may damage its head. Roselle said they have strong heads, so they definitely won't get injured. He will put up a solid door so that it does not break. Ritsu asked what he would do after the wild boar got trapped. Ritsu replied that they were timid and would not attack him unless he was in yellow. They won't have any other choice, so he thinks it won't be hard to catch them. If there are too many boars, they can use bows. Ritz said he had thought out the plan well, so he didn't think anything could go wrong. But they wouldn't know until they tried, so why wouldn't they make such a trap? The child, who a few hours ago did not even know about the basic concepts of the trap, exceeded all his expectations and even came up with a trap that Ritz approved and he is only five years old. He has incredible abilities. The next morning, they started building a trap. The older brothers dragged logs, Rosal drew a diagram, and ours took food. The trap was finally ready. Everyone was happy about it. Then the brother's father came and asked what it was. The brothers said it was a trap for catching prey. This is Roselle's doing. Now you can catch wild boars without hunting. The man was surprised that Roselle did it. Ours said that he came up with everything himself because he wanted to help him. Roselle peeking out of Ars's back. The man said he was very happy that Roselle had done something on his own, but he didn't think it should be used. Ars was surprised. The man turned to Rosal and told him to think carefully about what hunting is. The man left, and the brothers did not understand what was happening. The brothers told Roselle not to worry. He is sure that his father will change his mind when they catch something. Ars said that their father's words were incomprehensible to him. He wonders what he was talking about back then. The young man said that they had done everything, so why don't they all have lunch? The brothers said it sounded great. Roselle turned to Mr. Ritz and said he had a request. The next morning there were a lot of wild boars. Ars himself was surprised that there were so many of them. Ritz who asked if Roselle had seen it. The young man said that they had not caught a single family of wild boars. The brothers and Ars were surprised. Ars doesn't understand why. Roselle said that last night he asked Mr. Ritza to help him improve their trap. It was also written in a book about animals. The families of boars raising children seemed to dislike the smell of herbs, so in order not to catch such, 
he hung herbs. If they did fall for the trap, he wanted to be sure that the cubs would be able to get out on their own, so they made a way to escape. They caught so many because he was putting their favorite food, I e apples all over the house. He thought the smell would attract them, but he didn't think there would be so many of them. But he is sure that there will be no families. Ars asked why he did it. Roselle said that since his father said yesterday to think about what hunting is, he tried to remember how his father hunted. As a child, the man said that he had not caught a single boar today. Suddenly, little Roselle said that there was a boar there. The man said that, unfortunately, it was not prey. His father said that he never hunts a family of wild boars. The baby boar is, indeed, slower and smaller, so it is easier to catch it. Since it is more difficult to catch adults, it was written in the book that you need to hunt for children. However, for them, who live and extract food from the forest, it is wrong to catch a boar. In addition, it will also negatively affect the forest ecosystem. Dad didn't tell him to catch prey the hard way. He told him to think about whether it was possible to hunt wild boar children by disrupting the ecosystem of the forest. Humans are smart enough to hunt other animals freely. They have to hunt to survive. But once they are given a mind, they have to think about who they are hunting. Roselle noticed the faces of ours, the brothers, and the others and began to apologize for being too much. The brothers said they knew how to apply this knowledge to hunting, but it turns out that traps can handle it too. They said Roselle was incredible. Gatos asked what was wrong, because he didn't look particularly happy. Roselle replied that he didn't really mean it. He's wondering what to do with so many boars. His head is just full of different thoughts. Ars was surprised that Roselle was thinking about it. Isn't that too much already? Suddenly, Roselle noticed his father, who was watching the trap. The brothers ran up to their father and said that this Roselle trap was simply amazing. He remembered his words and improved the trap. This trap is only for adult wild boars. The man turned to Roselle and said he needed to get out of their house. This shocked Roselle and everyone else. The man once again told his son that he needed to leave their house. Roselle asked his father what he was talking about. The man turned to Lord Ars and asked if he had really said that he would take Roselle with him. He looked at it and asked him to take Roselle with him. Then the man turned around and went home. Roselle asked him to stop and wait. The brothers were about to follow them, but Ars stopped them and told the two if they could wait a bit. My father was sitting behind a stump sharpening an axe, and Roselle was standing next to them. Suddenly, there was a rustle from the side and Roselle's older brothers appeared. They turned to their father and said that Lord Ars would come for them in a week. Then they turned to Rosel and told him to decide for himself whether he would stay here or go with them. These are the words of Lord Ars. In the following week, Roselle would like to talk to his father, but the man avoided him every time. Roselle was uneasy. Two days later, the brothers called Rosel from their room because his soup would get cold. Marx asked if he would really lock himself in his room this year too. Gatos said he was just incorrigible. Of all of them, he was the one who missed his mother the most because it had already been two years since his mother's death. Mom died when Rosel was three years old. It was like he was broken into pieces, but he remembers that his father was much worse. Neither his father nor his brothers admit it but he knows that mom's condition was getting worse because of his birth. Mom died because of Roselle. That's why he doesn't leave his room on the anniversary of his mother's death. He's afraid that he'll make everyone even more upset. He is the main cause of my mother's death. He is the main burden of the family and that's why he would like to never be born. Then he heard some noise on the roof. The brothers said that you need to be quiet because Roselle will wake up. Roselle's family climbed onto the roof of the house. The father said that on the night their mother died, the moon was also full. Marx thanked his father for raising them all these years. They have already become warriors. The father told the brothers to tell this to their mother. They bumped mugs and thanked their mom for everything. The older brother asked his father why he was acting like this with Roselle. That trap was better than any of their other hunting techniques, and he tried so hard. My father said he was the only one they should be angry with. He still couldn't find something to do that Roselle would be good at. He only noticed his mistakes and it hurt him. He could not see the potential of his child and he has no right to be called his father. He does not want to be an obstacle to the development of his potential. It would be better if he stayed with Lord Ars. He wants him to grow up in a place where a bright future awaits him. This child is the spitting image of his mother. He was always more worried about him than about his own development. That's why he's so outraged. He has no choice but to make him hate him. That's all he can give him. Everyone was amazed at what they had just heard. The father turned to Gatos and Marx and told them to become Roselle's support for him. He, like the two of them, is his beloved son. The three of them were sitting on the roof crying, and Roselle was sobbing in his room. Exactly a week has passed. Ars came to the hunter's house and wished him good morning. 
He said he had come to pick up their sons. The man turned to Lord Ars and thanked him for taking custody of his sons. Ars thanked the man. Gatos and Marx came out to Lord Ars. They say goodbye to their father and tell him that he is not young, so he must look after himself. The man asked not to worry about him and wished his sons good luck. Ars asked where Roselle was. Gatos said he didn't leave his room today. Everyone was silent, and then the door from Roselle's room opened. Roselle said he was coming with them. Everyone was surprised. Roselle walked past his father and didn't say a word. Roselle turned to his brother and thanked him for yesterday. Gatos and Marx smiled and asked about yesterday, because they didn't understand what Roselle was talking about. The young man smiled and turned to Lord Ars. He asked him to take him with him. Ars asked if he was sure. Roselle gave a positive response. Ars agreed and said they could move forward. Ars told Rosel that he won't be able to see his father for a while, so he's confident in his choice. He thinks it's worth saying goodbye. Roselle said that everything was fine. Gatos asked if he was sure, to which Roselle agreed. Finally, they set off. Roselle thought that his father's feelings had been completely transferred to him, so he should pretend as if he hadn't heard anything and fulfill his dreams. He remembered his father, who was crying, and then stopped and ran to him, calling for him. He said he wasn't good at hunting. He was always incompetent at home. However, he will study in the house of Lord Ars and will learn a lot of things and will be useful for this city. He will do everything to create a better trap. Then he asks in tears if they can be together. Ars was very surprised by Roselle's words. Mars and Gatos began to cry. Their father stood with his shaking fist clenched and suddenly began to sob, saying that he would wait for Roselle. Ars thought that Roselle and his father had finally sown the seed of peace between them and he was so happy for them. Gatos turned to Lord Ars and said that it was all thanks to him. Marx thanked Lord Ars. Ars agreed with them. Earlier, Marx and Gatos did not understand what had come over them and they needed to go after their father and Rosal. But Ars stopped them. He asked what their father had just said and if they had not understood the true meaning of his words. The brothers were surprised and did not understand what Lord Ars was talking about. Ars can tell for sure that their father always took care of Roselle, so why are his words so different from the attitude? Marx asked why his father was saying that then. Ars doesn't know the details, but he thinks he cares so much about Roselle. The brothers rushed to tell Roselle about it. Ars stopped them and said that this way they would ignore their father's feelings. Gatos asked what they should do then. Ars said that if only Roselle had heard it from his father's mouth. Gatos said that in five days it's the anniversary of mom's death and on that day Roselle locks herself in her room. Ars said that he understood and that if at that time they could have talked to their father and Roselle heard it all. Gatos replied that Ars was right and he thought it was a good idea. Thanks to Ars, Roselle can also go with them and become a vassal of the young man. Ars said that it was true, but it didn't matter anymore. Roselle has great talent and Ars will be glad if Roselle becomes a vassal. But first of all, the connection between his father and Roselle has finally been restored and the young man is very happy about it. Gatos and Marx said they would do anything for their lord and they would be the best guards for him. The young man thanked them. Roselle said he was too. He's not that reliable, but he'll do his best too. Ars said he was looking forward to it. At that time, it was raining in another area. A carriage was traveling along the road, accompanied by knights. The coachman said they would arrive at Lamberg soon. The passenger said he was looking forward to it. It's been three years now, ever since Roselle became Ars's companion. Ars's younger brother and sister came to him with flowers and asked him to look at these flowers, and the younger brother said that he had a lot more of them. Ars smiled and told them that they had ripped off so much. Ars Luvent was already nine years old. He asked his brother and sister what they would do with their flowers. My brother said it was for soldiers. Since they are doing their best fighting for them, the villagers, then they want to thank them. Ars's younger sister noticed a movement to the side and said that the warriors had returned. The warriors were delighted and began waving to Lord Ars. Ars was delighted and greeted everyone. He thanked me for my efforts and asked how the battle went. The warrior said that this victory was overwhelming. Ars was surprised and said it was a great job. Then the young man noticed the Ritz. The young man was already 18 years old. All his stats were up to par. His cavalry, stamina, and eloquence abilities were S rank. For the past three years, Ritsu has often participated in the war. Thanks to him, all military operations were successful. His bravery and ability stats grew from battle to battle. Ars thanked Ritz and said that he was also grateful that he remained his mentor even during meals. Ritsu replied that it was a great honor for him to be his mentor. Ars asked how Rosal was doing. Ritsu replied that he was simply amazing. All the strategies were invented by him. Then Arsa called Roselle and told the young man to see that he had found some interesting books among the loot. Roselle's characteristics were also on top. 
Arz's father was against Roselle becoming a vassal because he was too young, but after he saw how much the food situation had improved, he changed his mind and appointed him a vassal. During the war, Rosal followed and studied strategies from Ritz. Although he is still just learning, Ars has heard that the strategies he has come up with impress even Ritz with his eloquence. For a strategist, his stats are growing very fast. It seems that his brothers are also making progress in the military. Then Ars heard a noise and laughter. He turned around and saw Charlotte there, who was pushing her younger brother Ars on her shoulders. Charlotte's characteristics were also on top. Charlotte's leadership points have also increased. She's their strongest battle mage. She has not changed at all during this time, and she almost always spends time with the twins, for which the young man is grateful to her. Ars turned to Charlotte and said that he could see that the girl was fully charged. Charlotte said that Roselle and Ritsu were with them, so there were no unnecessary problems. She had nothing to do, and she got bored during this time. Over the past three years, Ars has been on the lookout for potential warriors like Gatos, and the military power of their family has increased accordingly. Now their military might is considered one of the best in the channel. Ars was able to gather the bravest and most powerful people. The lives of ordinary people have improved, and his family has gained even more fame in these three years. He is sure that they are rapidly moving towards their goal of becoming the strongest territory. But the young man is worried about one thing. Ars's father has been feeling very unwell lately. With the current level of medicine in this world, it is simply impossible to determine the causes of his father's illness. My father tried to go to the doctors, but it doesn't help in any way. Ars asked his father how he was feeling. The man coughed and then the young man realized that his father was not getting better. Ars said that he wants to replace his father in the next battle. The man refused and said that they had already discussed it. It's not his concern, so he should leave everything to Ritsu and the others. The man said that he would take part himself and it was not discussed in any way. Ars said that his father should not take part in the battle, because his condition leaves much to be desired. The man said there was no other choice. Mizian, where they live, is in the worst situation at the moment. A year ago, the ruler of Mizian became very ill. He is still alive, but bedridden and seemingly unconscious. As expected, he left a will that his youngest son would take over his throne. The older brother, upon learning about this, came to the conclusion that it was all set up by his younger brother. At first glance, it may seem that utter chaos is going on. The older brother, whose talent was devalued, had recently performed well in battle. Accordingly, many vassals decided to support him and help him take the throne. At the same time, the neighboring continent of Sates is distinguished by its unity. Due to his father's illness, the management of the military will fall on the Ritz. He knew that he would have to participate too. The father turned to Ars and said that he should not be up to it. He has more important tasks as the lord of their family. Ars was surprised. Ars asked what could be more important than that. The man asked what Ars was talking about, because it was about the bride. Ars was very surprised and started asking about the bride and asked which bride he was talking about and if it was his bride. He asked if he really had a bride, but when she appeared and why. Ars's father said that it had already been decided before his birth, and then asked if he had told his son about it before. Ars said that his father had not told him anything like that. The man made a serious face and asked his son to listen to him, and then said that he was making a mistake. Ars said it was very important information. The man said that he had recently received a letter and for the same reason he called him. Ars didn't understand why he would find out about such important news so late. He grabbed the letter and immediately ran away. Ars bursts into the office and immediately runs to the Ritz, saying that he is in great danger. He received a letter from his fiancé. Everyone was very surprised that the letter came from Ars's fiancé. Charlotte said she thought he wanted to marry her. The girl hugged Ars closer to her. Ars shouted that he was not joking now, because he had just found out that he had a bride. Ritsu asked what was written in the letter. Suddenly, they were interrupted by the maid and turned to Lord Ars. She said it looked like his fiancé had already arrived at the mansion. It said she was coming today or now. Ritz told Lord Ars to leave all the preparations to them, as he needed to meet her right away. Charlotte shouted that she would deal with the younger ones right away. Ars ran to the exit because he didn't know what to do now, because he was so young. In his previous life, he did not even have a girlfriend and he is very interested in what she is like. He was greeted by a sweet girl who was waiting for the young man at the entrance. She greeted Ars and said that she was finally glad to meet him. Ars was surprised that the girl was so sweet and she turned out to be his bride. He had no idea that she would be so sweet and was he really so lucky. 
he analyzed her and saw that she had high points of strategy, politics, and ambitions were just off the scale, but her abilities were at zero. Ars realized that her ambitions were 80, and her politics 100. This girl is very dangerous. The girl asked Ars what was wrong. At that moment, the young man was thinking that she had 80 ambitions and politics, and that this simply could not be. Usually, the characteristics of politics are high when a person has negotiation skills and the ability to maintain a good dialogue. But why are the girl's ambitions so great, and is it really in her plans to become a famous aristocrat? Outwardly, she looks like an ordinary cute girl, or she just pretends that she is like that. Then he wonders if she's really trying to take over their estate. If that's the case, then it's bad. His father is bedridden right now, so only he can stop her from doing this. He thinks she can't fool him. The girl apologized and asked if it could be that she had something on her face. The girl's servant said that he was deeply convinced that he was simply amazed by the beauty of the girl. Ars thought that this butler was simply gorgeous, but such a statement is very embarrassing. The girl said she was very confused. Ars was surprised again that it was very nice. He offered to give them a tour and thought that he would not let himself be fooled. Suddenly, the girl's butler saw Ritz, who was cleaning up in a hurry. He was surprised that it was a stamp and asked what he was doing here at all. The girl asked Jin if he hadn't heard of the Ritz from the Luwin family. Rumors of his skill had even reached their distant lands. He has incredible abilities. She won't let him slander Ritz, so she demands that he immediately apologize for his cheeky behavior. Ars was surprised, and Jin immediately began to apologize. The young man said that everything was fine. Then they were distracted by the maids. The girls greeted Mrs. Lizia and thanked her for the visit. The girl was very surprised and thanked everyone for it. She said her name was Lizzie Plyde and she hoped they would get along. She also said that their estate was in excellent condition, so it was immediately obvious that they had tried their best. Ars told Lizzie that she didn't really need to be so formal. The girl said that one day they could become her vassals, so she would like to communicate with everyone. After a while they had lunch at the table. After a while, Ars said that he was definitely full. Lija turned to Lord Ars and told him that he was dirty. The young man apologized. Ars thought that he was very pleased to have a dialogue with her, despite the fact that this was their first conversation. He is not very good at communicating, but he feels comfortable with Lysia. She is quite quick-witted and knows how to keep up a good conversation, and she is also very polite and very sweet. If he hadn't looked into Lija's status, he would have instantly lost his head. Suddenly, Lija addressed him by name. The girl said that on the way here they visited Lamberk and it is a very lively and beautiful city, and a powerful army is responsible for protecting the city. Ars thanked the girl and said that he would personally introduce her to the city, but it was pouring like a bucket outside. The girl said that then everything would be smooth when the rain finally stopped. After a while, the rain stopped. Ars asked Miss Lija if she had the ability to control the weather. The girl refused. She said she was watching the clouds closely and noticed they were curly. Ars said it was just unbelievable. At this time, Charlotte and Roselle were watching Lizia and Ars. Charlotte asked Roselle what he thought of this girl. Roselle said that she is quite nice and polite, but it seems to him that there is something wrong with her. She intimidates him a little. Charlotte said that his intuition did not seem to fail him, because it also seemed to her that she was definitely hiding something from them. At that time, Lija turned to Lord Ars and said that since the weather was sunny now, he could introduce her to the city. Ars thought that they hadn't warned the locals that Lizia was coming today, so he wouldn't want anything to happen to her. He said the ground is dirty, so he thinks they should stay at home. The girl got up from the table and took the young man's hands, and then said that he assured the young man that everything would be fine. Ars agreed and said that he would show the girl the city. Charlotte thought that this was very bad. Ars and Lija were walking around the city. The villagers recognized Lord Ars, and the woman asked who the girl next to him was. Ars said that this was his fiancée, Lizia Pride. The woman congratulated the young man and said that everyone should know about this wonderful news. Another woman said that his fiancée was very nice. Ars thanked them and thought that he couldn't tell Lizzie that Lamberk was in a difficult situation. Lija asked him to introduce her to the city, but he has a bad feeling about it. He turns to Miss Lizzie and says that Lamberk is mostly a rural town, so there's not much to show. Lija smiled and asked what Lord Ars was talking about, because this city is simply magnificent. Besides, everyone treats him well. Suddenly, they heard a scream. Two men were arguing with each other. One said that he did not understand what he was talking about, because he did everything as the young man said. 
Another man shouted that he had not said anything like that and he would not pay them for it. Ars asked what was going on here. The woman said it looked like the two of them didn't get along because of the magic stones. The furniture maker claims that he ordered fire magic stones, and the merchant mistakenly bought sound stones. The first one does not want to buy other materials, and the second one claims that he bought everything the way the first one ordered. That's how it ends when doing business without contractual papers. Ars thought that he couldn't tell who was right, but he had to solve this problem. However, the young man does not know if he can do it, because Lyja is watching. If she finds out that he is unable to control this, she will laugh at him and say that he is useless and the estate will now belong to her. Ars doesn't understand what to do and he can't screw up. Suddenly, a voice from the side said that he now felt a conflict that was about to escalate into a fight. Ars was surprised, saw Charlotte and asked what she was doing here. The girl replied that she wanted to stop the noise. She'll just release a one-time magic spell. Lyja asked her not to do it. Charlotte asked why she should listen to a little girl like her. Lyja replied that the girl was not the same magnificent magician named Charlotte. The girl was surprised. Suddenly, Lizia beamed and said that she was her devoted fan. They say that her magic is simply amazing. She wants to see it with her own eyes and asks if she can shake her hand. Charlotte paused, and then grinned and said that maybe the girl was right. Then she turned to Rosal and asked what was wrong with him. Lyja turned to Lord Ars and said she had a request. The girl asks if she can solve this problem. In return, if she successfully deals with this, she asks if Ars will be able to fulfill one of her requests. The young man is surprised. He is very interested in what kind of request this is. At that moment, the men began to swear. Lyja called them. The girl smiled and asked them not to be so angry, because at this rate they will spoil their beautiful faces. The men noticed her, but did not understand who she was. The girl bowed and said that her name was Lizia Plaid and she was the bride of the next head of the Lewent family. She is very glad to see them. Suddenly, all the residents began to congratulate the girl on being a bride, and the men said that they seemed to be the same age as Lord R's. Then they started fighting again. One man said he still hadn't admitted he was wrong. Another man asked what the first one was talking about. Lyja said she had heard about it. She wants to talk about sound type magic stones and asks if she can buy them on behalf of the played family. Everyone is very surprised. The girl says that these stones are quite rare in their area, so she would like to buy them at a high price. Her dear father said that he wanted to enjoy music in his living room. In addition, they can get a lot of fire magic stones from their volcano. They have them in abundance, so they can buy them at a low price. The men were surprised. You can sell them for a high price by buying them for a low one. Everyone will be in the black. This solves the problem. Lizia told everyone to take a look and held out her hand towards ours, saying that he had made it all up. The young man was surprised and agreed. Everyone was surprised and shouted that Lord Ars was worried about their welfare. They are very pleased that Lord Ars himself helped solve this little misunderstanding. He is definitely the next chapter. Ars thought that this was all Lyja's decision. He then said that in order to prevent such problems in the future, he was asking them to draw up an agreed contract in advance. Of course, it's good that they all take each other's word for it, but it can lead to some misunderstandings like this. The man apologized to Lord Ars and said it was his mistake. Ars replied that everything was fine and they would move forward together. The residents agreed. Lizia said she was very glad that the conflict had been resolved. Ars thanked the girl for saving him. Lizia smiled, and Ars thought that it was because of her characteristics. She immediately solved the problem and now stood right in front of him. He thinks he's going to have to listen to her request after all. However, he is very interested in what kind of request this is. After a while, the young man apologizes to Lizia and says that they should have just walked, but as a result she had to sort out the conflict. The girl replied that everything was fine and she even learned a lot of useful things. Ars was surprised and asked about a lot of useful things in his mind. At that moment, Charlotte grinned and said that although the girl had tried hard, she still did not recognize her. Then she and Roselle left. Ars asked Lizia about her request. The girl asked if the young man really wanted to hear her. Ars agrees and says that he promised. The girl is silent at first, and then, confused, asks Lord Ars what kind of people he likes. She would like to know about his personal preferences. Ars was very surprised and thought about what kind of question this was and what the girl was trying to achieve. He cannot understand Lyja's true intentions. His mind is no match for hers and there is no point in stalling for time. He decides to just go straight. Ars shouts out that he has no reason to hide anything, so he likes people who do not hide their true intentions. He continued to stare at her, and Lizzie's gaze clouded. After the young man said that he had no reason to be secretive and liked people who did not hide their true intentions, he stared at Lyja with tenacity. 
The girl smiled and said that she understood the young man and would keep this in mind. Ars was very surprised. The girl said that she was a little tired after the walk, so would Lord Ars like to come back? The young man agrees. He had not expected such a reaction from the girl and was not sure that he had expressed himself correctly. Later that night, they ate a sumptuous dinner prepared by Ritz. Everyone enjoyed the banquet, which ended with an enchanting show. Ars returns to his room, having already changed into his pajamas. He was very tired and thought that he had not found out the true intentions of Lizzie. One thing he knows for sure is that she had a great rest. It's late, so Lizzie stayed at the party. He needs to do his best tomorrow and he can't relax until Lizzie leaves. He is so exhausted that he immediately falls asleep. Suddenly, he notices some kind of shuffling and, lifting the blanket, notices Lija under it. The young man was scared and was about to scream, but Lizzie stopped him and told him to be quiet. Ars was surprised and asked himself what Lija was talking about and how she got here in the first place, because this is his room. The girl asked if the young man was surprised. Ars got out of bed, looked out the window, and then out the door. He went to the bed and said that this was his room and he would send the girl out, since she had the wrong room. The girl refused. She said that she was shown to her chambers, but she decided to look in on the young man. Ars was surprised and asked why the girl decided so. Lizia smiled and said that she wanted to see the surprised face of the young man. Ars realized that the girl was flirting with him or just joking. The girl said that she was joking, and then added that Ars talked about loving sincerity. The young man agreed. The girl shrank, and then said that then she would reveal the true reason for her visit. Ars listened to her attentively. He was thinking that Lija had sneaked into his room for this. She's his fiancée, but he didn't have a real relationship. It was the middle of the night outside and he didn't know what to do. Since this is the case and Lija is right here, he must find out the whole truth. Ars said that he was very pleased because he wanted to get to know Lija better. He made a cup of tea. The girl thanked him and said that the tea was very tasty. Ars decided to try it too, but got burned. Lizia worried about him and asked if everything was okay. Ars thought that he was not in the mood for tea at all, and then asked what Lizia wanted to talk about. The girl thought about it, and then asked Mr. Ars who she was to him. Ars choked on his tea, and Lizia asked him if he was okay. Ars asked why the girl asked him about it. Lija said that she can find out how a person feels just by looking at them, even if they are trying to hide their emotions. This is a special skill. Ars was surprised. Lizia said that the emotion that the young man experienced at their first meeting was doubt. There was nothing surprising in his discretion, since they were strangers after all, but she was sure that after talking to her, his wariness would subside. Ars thought that her words made sense. Any speaker can endear himself to people. Lizia said that, however, all the time they were together, Ars's wariness only grew and, in the end, he asked about her true intentions. She asks the young man to tell her why he is so careful with her. Ars thought that perhaps this power was a derivative of her political abilities. She is very observant. Now he understands her concern. She's his fiance. Moreover, she is younger than him and yet she is angry because she cannot gain his trust. Who would have thought that knowing her status would bring her to this? He cannot drastically change his attitude towards her, but it seems to him that she is telling the truth. If so, he must be honest, because to do otherwise is very rude. Ars says he can see other people's abilities and ambitions. The girl has a talent for politics and exorbitant ambitions, or there is some motive behind them. He wondered about the sincerity of her actions. He apologizes to her if he made her worry. He doesn't know if the girl will believe him. Lizia says that she does not doubt the young man, but, on the contrary, now everything has fallen into place. Ars is surprised that the girl believes him. Lija says it's true that she has some aspirations. Ars asks what her ambitions are. The girl asks if he really wants her to tell him. Ars thinks about wealth or power. The girl is embarrassed and says that the goal of any girl is to become the chosen one of a beautiful man. Ars is surprised. She asks if it could be very strange. Ars continues to be silent and then she starts screaming and asks the young man not to be silent. Ars says that there is nothing strange and it is a wonderful goal. He thinks he was puzzled by her sweet face. However, it is true. In this world, women need the support of a strong man to defend their territories. This is the best way out for the daughter of an earl. In that case, he doesn't understand what she thinks about such a weak territory as his. Lija said she understood Lord Ars now. She had heard quite a few good things about the Lewent family, but still, there were other families. If the young man had been a fool, she would have broken off the engagement, no matter what it cost her. However, when she met the young man, she changed her mind. She thinks she would like to be his wife. Ars asks why the girl decided that, because their estate is small. 
The girl said it was for now. The young man has power. Today, she made sure that the Luvent estate would prosper. Aris said that he just has strong people on his side. Lija said that Lambert's people love him. When she said she was his fiancé, everyone around was genuinely happy for him. People looked happy. The first thing she thought about at that moment was that being sincerely loved like ours was a truly wonderful ability. And from that moment on, Lizia began to like ours. The young man was very embarrassed and thanked the girl. Ours and Lija were very confused. Lija said it was getting pretty late, so she thought she should go back to her room. The young man agrees. The girl smiles and wishes him a good night. She leaves, and Ars remains confused on the bed with tea in his hands. He was very angry because he told the girl very much and what he was thinking when he thanked her. It was the first time they confessed their feelings to him. However, speaking of your goal, she looked so sweet and embarrassed. He thinks that Lizia confessed her feelings to him and listened to his story without once doubting. Moreover, she is very sweet. Ars thought that it was written on his face that he bowed to her charm. At that moment, Lija was standing outside the door. She clutched her face and thought about what she had done. She got into the guy's room. It's such a shame. Besides, she only left because of her embarrassment. She probably blushed like a fool in front of him. However, she talked about her feelings and intentions and that's the main thing. One morning, a girl was carrying lovely cookies in a bag. The maid asked Miss Lizzie who these cookies were for. The girl said she made them yesterday. Today she and dad are going on a picnic, because he promised her. The girl went into her father's office. The man was sitting at his desk and working. There were a lot of books and mugs of tea on his desk. The man asked Lija what happened. The girl said that nothing had happened. She made cookies to give him strength. She asked if he would eat for them. The man stroked the girl's head. From an early age, she felt the emotions of people, which is why she realized that the world of nobility is dirty. It's all fake and there's no sincerity. They betray each other for their own benefit. She knew about their true feelings and it seemed to her that her gift was a curse. One day the truth was revealed to her. They were at a wedding. Other noblewomen said that they were jealous of the bride because she was from the lower ranks of the nobility. As she married a rich husband, she immediately became a higher status. Lizia thought that by marrying an authoritative and rich man, she could not be afraid of this world, mired in lies and conspiracies. Such thoughts visited her and the ability she hated so much appeared in a different light. She saw vile things, learned to say what people wanted to hear. Therefore, she was never interested in young Mr. Luventov. She needed a man of another level, but for the sake of decency, she came and was nice to everyone. But even so it didn't smell good, because he was so suspicious. Despite her speeches and smiles, his doubts only intensified. She didn't understand what he was thinking, but she understood one thing. The young man apologized to her if he had tired her out with a walk. Hiroshi and Lambert is probably not very uncomfortable to walk in such shoes. There were calluses on Lizzie's feet, but she smiled and said that everything was fine. The young man asked her to wait a minute. He walked up to the merchant's shop and then returned to the girl and handed her a bottle. He said it was for a girl. If she gets calluses, then she should anoint it and it will help her. He asks her to take it just in case. The girl was very surprised and thanked ours. She realized that he was very kind. It is possible that this is a show of kindness because she is his fiancé, so she will also behave nicely. However, he was kind to everyone. All the inhabitants loved Lord Ars. The kindness of Lord Ars is indifferent to ranks and statuses. His mercy has no limits. He didn't use his strength to look down on others. The people treat him as if he were a member of their family. Elijah realized that this world is just beautiful. Residents are happy, even if the city is not rich. Maybe that's what she's looking for. She wants to be a part of this world. She is actually attracted to the young man. And then Lord Ars talked about her true feelings and accepted them after her confession. She is proud to have fallen in love with such a man. She didn't think she could love anyone in this world. She thanks God for giving her this ability. She figured out how to use it. Ars has both strength and abilities, but he is so kind, and they have a thorny path ahead of them. So, as the person closest to him, she will stop anyone who prevents him from creating a new world. Whoever it is, she will crush them all. The next morning, Lizia thanked Ars for the reception and then invited him to visit their house as well. Ars agreed. The young man was embarrassed and said that the girl said that they were very beautiful, so he gave her a bag and offered to take them with him. These are the seeds of flowers growing near his house. The girl was delighted and thanked the young man, saying that he was very kind. Ars was embarrassed. She came closer to him and told Lord Ars that he had not responded to her confession. He was embarrassed. The girl said that she would not ask him to answer right now, but she would do everything possible to make him notice her. Ars said he would do his best too. Lija told Lord Ars that she had already decided that she wanted to be with him. 
Ars said he understood and then asked what he should do. He was too excited and didn't respond. But at their next meeting, he will definitely tell her that he wants to be with her too. After Lizzie left, they started exchanging letters. He has never sent letters, so it is a little exciting for him to write them. He is pleased that he cannot be close to her, even when she is far away. He is very happy with the response letters. Ars finished and said that it seemed to be good. He knows that this letter is about everyday life, but still. He writes to dear Lizzie and asks what she is doing and how she is feeling. The fact that the flowers given to him have sprouted is pleasing to him. He is sure that they will bloom next spring. There are fewer battles now and things are going peacefully. The war for power has subsided a little, but recently a joyful event took place. His father's health is improving. That's because he thinks less about the war. Soon they will be able to walk around the garden. He asks the girl to let him show him around. He hopes they can have dinner together. He looks out the window and thinks that everything is so peaceful. He hopes that this peaceful money will last forever. However, a year later, Ritsu bursts into Arz's room and tells him that trouble has happened with Lord Raven. The young man did not understand what was happening. After a while, they came to Arz's father's room. The young man said that his father said that he was feeling well. Ritz said that he went to train with the soldiers, but suddenly fainted. Arz said it couldn't be. He thought his father was recovering. He asked the doctor if his father would be okay. The man said that he also had a high fever. He has severely exhausted his body and is rapidly weakening. Apparently, the improvement was temporary. Now his condition has deteriorated significantly. He doesn't want to say it, but the young man should prepare for the worst. After a while, the young man stood at the window and looked at the downpour. Ars wondered if this was the end for his father and if it really had already come. He had always known that this day would come, but it had come too soon. The young man remembered the moments he spent with his father and thought that he had not yet repaid his father for all that he had done for him. He asks God to give him some more time. However, late at night, Ritsu broke into Lord Ars's room. The young man jumped up and asked what happened to his father. Ritz said he wasn't Lord Raven. The ruler of Mizian was killed. Ars was very surprised by what he heard. After a while, Ars, Ritsu, Charlotte and Roselle sat at the table and thought about what had happened. Ars thought it was Lousy. All these events happened at the same time. Ritsu told Arsu that they should prepare for the future. Ars asked what he thought was going to happen. Roselle said that the war would definitely start soon. Ritsu added that he thinks so too. His children will start fighting for power again. Ars thought it was logical, because the ruler died before choosing an heir. It is natural that his children will start a power struggle. Ars asked if they knew who sent the assassins. Ritz was told that the killer was caught, but committed the murder himself, so his sender is unknown. Ars said it was one of them. Ritsu added that it could have been any of the sons, as well as it could have been a murderer from another country. But now there is no point in thinking about it, because a war is coming. Ars said that using human lives is a tool in his game. People are just terrible sometimes. Ritsu, Charlotte, and Roselle stared at Ars in silence. Ritz said that the ruler of the canal would visit them soon. They don't know what the canal is going to do, but they should prepare the soldiers for departure soon. However, while Lord Raven is unwell, Charlotte and he will be the leaders of the squads. Ars gave a negative answer. Their soldiers are loyal to the House of Luent and will fight for them. Without a family member, their spirit will be undermined. Ritz was told if the young man was offering. Ars interrupts him and says that he will go with them. He will fulfill his duty to his father and the people of this country. The next day, Ars, Ritsu and Charlotte arrived at the canal castle. The young man turned and looked at the city. He said that nostalgia had overtaken him. Ritsu said it had been seven years since his last visit. Charlotte said she should visit those children. Ritsu was thinking that the Duke of the Canal, who is served by the whole of Lamberk, he wants to know what he is like. He must be a great man to run such a territory. Three days ago, Ars was sitting by his father's bedside when suddenly Ritz came into the room with a letter in his hand. He said that, as expected, they had received a letter from the Duke of the Canal, Lord Lemire. The young man took the letter and asked where the meeting would take place. Ritz was told that they expected them to arrive at the Canal Castle in three days. Ars thought that he would do his best for his father's sake. He ordered the Ritz to prepare for departure. Three days later, Ritsu, Ars and Charlotte approached the guard standing at the gate. Ars introduced himself and said that he had come instead of his father, Lord Raven, to answer to Lord Lemire. The guard checked the letter and said that it was indeed an authentic letter, and then he asked if they were really from the Luvent family, since the young man was very young. Charlotte intervened and asked if the guard really doubted the letter. The man recognized the fiery princess of the Luvents and the girl. The girl asked if he really only noticed. Ars was surprised that, as expected from Charlotte, who is extremely popular. Then the man saw the grim reaper of the Luent family. 
Ars was surprised and asked what kind of name it was and what happened during the battles. Ritz said he didn't like the nickname. It sounds like he's a danger to society. Ars thought that he was really a danger to society. Ritsu continued and said that, in any case, the guard knows who he is. The man agreed and said that he would show the way. Ars was surprised that this place was even better inside than outside. Then a man turned to Ars. He said that Lord Ars had arrived. As he understood it, Lord Raven could not attend. Ars did not understand who this man was. He bent down and said, apologized, that he should have introduced himself. His name is Minas Leonard, and he is a vassal of the House of Piles. Ars thought that he was a direct vassal of Lord Lamer. He is a powerful man and he needs to be more polite to him. Ars says it's nice to meet you, and then introduces himself. He says he came here instead of his father. Minas asked if Lord Raven was really ill. The young man agreed and said that he was getting better, but then his condition deteriorated sharply. The man said that it must be hard for him. He will pray for his speedy recovery. In any case, he looks at Ritz and Charlotte and thinks that he sincerely hopes for their cooperation. Ars asks if he really knows them. The man agreed and said that he had witnessed their strength on the battlefield. Ars decided to use analysis. As expected from a vassal of the House of Piles, his stats are quite high. He is all outwardly educated and good at everything. However, when compared, Ritz and Charlotte are much more capable. He's glad they're on his side. The man says that he would like to recruit them, as it is very convenient to live in the castle. Ars shouted that they couldn't do it. Then he thinks that with this man, Ritsu and Charlotte will have a great future. Their skills are more suitable for large possessions, not for small ones like theirs. Lamberk won't be the same without them. He doesn't know what to do if they leave. Ritsu smiles and thanks the man, but he has already decided that he will serve the House of Luvents all his life. Charlotte agreed. Mina said it was a great pity. The Luvents house must be a wonderful place. Ars thanked the man for the compliment. Then the man invites them to go, because the other lords are waiting for them. Ritsu calls Lord Arsa and says that they are with him, so he should not be scared. Ars smiles and tells them that he will definitely try, because he is really lucky. The young man enters the room where there is a round table. He starts to get nervous, but then clenches his fist. He says it's a pleasure to meet you. He introduces himself and says that he has arrived in place of his father, Lord Raven, Baron Lamark. The room was deathly silent. No one told him anything, so he went to his seat to sit down. He sat down on a chair, but the silence continued. Ars did not understand why they were silent and whether they might suspect him because he was a child. The man turned to Lord Raven's son and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. He asks if the young man remembers him. Ars thinks it's Kral Oslo, Baron of Kumaru, another territory adjacent to the canal. He used to play with him when he was little. Ars apologizes and says that he should have been the first to say hello, because a lot of time has passed. The man laughed and said he looked worried. He says that the young man has really grown up because he is already replacing his father. He hands him a cookie and asks him to relax. The young man thinks that the man is kind, as he was then. He thanks the man for the treats. Suddenly, he feels some kind of terrifying aura. He turns around and sees a man there, clenching his fists. The young man realizes that this man is looking at him with a crazy look and realizes that he is probably not welcome here. Ars doesn't understand what's going on and why this man is staring at him so intently. He's not welcome here at all. He doesn't understand what to do. Suddenly, the sound of shoes was heard. Suddenly, all the men stood up, and Ars did not understand what was happening. Ritsu called out to him. Ars doesn't know what's going on, so he decides to just keep an eye on everyone. The doors open and a silhouette of a handsome man appears in the opening. He tells them they can raise their heads. The man says he's glad to see them all here. Then the man sits down at the table. Ars thinks that this man is the lord of the canal and the owner of this castle. Lord Lemire Piles, as expected from such a high-ranking person, he is very brave, but his characteristics are not too balanced. If you look closely, where Lord Lemire is weak, his vassal is strong. When they are together, any decision made by the channel will be correct. The man says that he wants to ask again for putting him together at such a difficult time. He suggests that we get down to business. He wanted to talk to him personally. Because of the assassination of the ruler, war is inevitable. When this happens, the channel will take the side of the eldest son and this is not discussed. Ars thought that it was just as his father had predicted. The man asks if there are any objections. The man said that they have no objections and Ars also says that he does not mind. The man says that's all he wanted to discuss. He tells them to prepare for the coming war. Everyone accepted the order. The man left. Everyone started to prepare and immediately return and start preparing for war and start complicating training from tomorrow. 
Ritsu turned to Lord Ars and said that the meeting was over. Ars sighed and apologized, saying that he was very worried, and then asked if he had coped. Ritsu told Ars that he was doing well and his father would be pleased with him. Charlotte said that Ars did a great job. Then a man turned to Ars and said that this was their first meeting. His name is Hammond. Ars realized that this was the same man who had been glaring at him. He suddenly focused his attention on Hammond's name and said that it was Lord Tobquista. Hammond played, or the father of Lisa played. He doesn't understand why the man is so angry and whether Lysia was unhappy with their meeting. He imagines Lysia saying she doesn't want to have anything to do with someone like him. He thinks that Lysia said something after returning home. The young man asked the man what he needed. The man said that his daughter was in a bad mood after returning and was clearly unhappy with something. Ars said that's what he knew. He asked where he messed up. He will apologize as soon as possible. Then the man turned to Sir Ars and asked if he had already answered Lysia's letter. The young man remembered that when he was writing the letter, his father's condition worsened and the ruler was killed. The last few days have been very stressful. He said he didn't have a chance to answer. The man replied that it was not good. The young man apologized and said that he would respond as soon as he arrived home. Hammond replied that his daughter usually does not show emotions, but now she is so expressive and she must like the young man very much. Ars was embarrassed. The man said he was a bad father. Lyja is smart and attentive. He relied on her and didn't pay enough attention. He always left her alone because of his duties as a lord. She was still a little girl at the moment when she caught the vile conflict for power between the aristocrats. She is not one of those who would just ignore it and it was very hard for her. That's why he wants her to be happy. He knew it was his fault, but he was still watching the youth closely today. When it comes to his daughter, he is quite selfish, but he is terribly sorry. Raven is a great soldier. He knows that he can entrust his daughter to the son of such a wonderful man, so he gives him consent to the marriage. He bows and asks Ars to take care of Lizzie. The young man was embarrassed and asked the man to raise his head, and then he realized something. He said he would do everything to make the girl happy. The man replied that he would never forget these words and the next time the young man should tell her in person. Ars thought it was so annoying. He thought that the man was scary, but he really cares about Lizzie. Suddenly, the young man was called from the side, and he answered carelessly, but turned around and saw Lord Lemire there. The young man apologized and said that he had behaved inappropriately. The man replied that everything was fine and said that he felt sorry for Ars's father and he must be resting now. The young man agreed and thanked him for his concern. The man said that Lamberk is the smallest territory in the channel, which does not correspond to the power it possesses. Not to mention, it's incredible. After all, Ars came instead of his father, even though he is an 11-year-old child. This shows how good an heir the Luvent family has. He puts his hand on Ars's shoulder and says that he expects great decisions from him. Ars said he would try. The man tells Ritz and Charlotte that he relies on them. They agree and say that the man can rely on them. The man leaves. Ritsu smiles and says they can't let him down now. Charlotte agrees with the young man's words. Ars says they are right. He must fulfill his role and report to his father about the meeting. They all need to prepare properly. When Ritsu, Ars and Charlotte returned home, Ars's father was already on his feet and looking at his son out the window. Ars was very happy when he saw him. After a while, the young man was already sitting in his father's room and reported to him about the meeting. Lord Raven said it seemed that Lord Lemire would take his elder brother's side. He needs to get in shape. However, he could not even think that his son would go to such a meeting instead of him. Ars got scared and thought that he shouldn't have done that and maybe his father was mad at him. The man patted his son on the head and said that he had done a great job and this was a real feat for the child. Ars was surprised, but then he smiled and thanked his father for the praise. After a while, he came to his office to write a letter to Lizzie. He asked the girl in a letter if she was feeling well. He was very busy and couldn't answer until now. He offers his deepest apologies. Ars thought about writing more. He remembered something and wrote that, in addition, he had met the girl's father. He is an incredible man who wants to take care of his daughter's welfare. He will be grateful if the girl sends him a greeting. Everything has become much more complicated, because the war is coming. Their families need to work together to overcome it. And it's also getting very cold, so he asks her to take care of herself. The young man hopes that Lizia is okay, because he is a little worried and maybe she is too. The young man promised Mr. Hammond to make the girl happy. They would win this war, and he would protect Lyja, no matter what it cost him. After a while, the young man fell from the sound of the sword. Ritsu apologized to him and asked if he was okay. Ars said he was fine. He wouldn't keep fighting if he couldn't, so he suggests that Ritz continue. The young man said that they had been training all morning, so Ars needed a break. 
The young man replied that he was fine, so they should continue. Ritsu was excited. Then Ars looked at the other warriors and realized that everyone was training and getting stronger. However, he is marking time in one place. Some time ago, he led the squads in trial battles. The result was terrifying. No matter how many books he has read, he lacks experience in battle. But the main problem is that when he sees soldiers pointing swords at him, he cannot move. He is sure that Ritsu and Charlotte will help him. But if he is not sure on the battlefield, then the spirit of the soldiers will fall. It doesn't matter how good the squad's skills are. They don't mean anything if the leader is weak, and the Apk is weak right now. Suddenly, Ritz ran up to Lord Arsu and said that the neighboring province of Sates had sent soldiers into the canal. Ars was very surprised. They had territorial conflicts before the assassination of Ruler Million, and without him their territories are not united. It's the perfect time to attack. Ritsu said he believes the enemy will attack Kumara first. They will arrive there in four days. The Channel Lord ordered them to move out immediately. Ars realized that Kumaru was Mr. Kral's territory. Lamberk is the furthest from Sates, but if you capture the entire Channel, then eventually they will reach them. In addition, his father's condition will not allow him to go to war, which means that he must enter the battlefield. Ars did not understand whether he would succeed and whether he would be able to become a worthy leader. He's very scared and doesn't want to fight. He's very scared. Ars said they had to move out, so he would command the army. Ritsu was very surprised, but he noticed Ars's shaking hands. Ars told Ritz to gather everyone in the yard. Suddenly, Ritsu stopped him and said that his mere presence instilled confidence in the warriors. He says that he will be with him and ensure that he wins the first battle. Ars remained silent, but then told Ritz that he had never doubted him. After a while, they go out into the courtyard. Ars tells everyone that Sates's warriors are heading to Kumara. In this battle, he will command the warriors. Suddenly, someone stopped him. The young man turned around and saw his father there. Ars was very surprised by the arrival of his father. The man said that he would not allow his son to go to war now, so he would go. The young man said that his father was ill and he could not go there. The man replied that he had recovered and was fine now. Ars asked what if he got worse, because he might even die. The man said he wasn't going to die. Even if that happens, he will be glad to die for the canal and Lamark. Ritz turned to Lord Raven and Lord Ars. Raven told Ritz not to interfere. Ritsu apologized. Ars turned to his father and said that he agreed that he was weak, but Ritsu and Charlotte, as well as the others, would be with him. They will definitely win. The man said that wasn't the problem. He told his son that he was not ready to face the war head on. The young man was very surprised. He looked in the mirror. The man agreed and said that if his son insisted, he would conduct a test. The man turned to Grau and told him to bring the man he had caught here. The text will start right now. All the warriors began to whisper, and Ars did not understand what was happening. Suddenly it began to rain and someone's voice demanded to let him go. A man was brought to Ars. The young man asked who he was. Raven said his name was Baramoda. He killed, stole, and behaved badly in their domain. He's a scum who's committed a lot of crimes. They were supposed to execute him, but his illness delayed his death. They will execute him now, and the young man will watch. Ars asked if this was really the test. Raven agreed and said that, however, the young man should be calm during the execution. If he gets even a little worried, he will fail the text. Because death is a common thing on the battlefield. If he can't stay cool, he won't go to war. Otherwise his condition will affect the mood of the soldiers. If he remains calm, the man will check his readiness and let him go to the battlefield. Ars was surprised that one should not be taken aback by seeing a person die. He grew up in peacetime and never saw a murder. This also applies to his past life. Now someone like him will be watching the execution. He wonders if it's possible to stay calm at all. The man screamed for rescue, but his head was pinned down. Suddenly he looked at Ars, and the young man shuddered. Raven said that in the name of Lord Raven Leuvent, he orders the execution of the criminal Baramoda. The weapon swings and Ars flinches, but then it quickly ends. The young man was very surprised by what he saw now. The criminal's head rolled towards the young man and his legs gave way. Raven said that this is the first time everyone has behaved like this, so there's nothing to be ashamed of. However, to lose my temper so much because of such a thing. Raven concludes that the young man is not ready to lead an army. As he said, he will lead the army. Now Ars realized that he was not ready to go to the battlefield. He asks him not to worry, because he won't die. The man raises his sword and orders everyone to move out. A crowd of troops pass by Arsa. Ritsu, Charlotte and Roselle are also leaving. Ars remains alone in the yard. He did not fully understand that he was not ready for war. He really wasn't ready for this. Ars was left alone in the courtyard, which was being watered by rain. 
he was told that the opponents had one and a half times more troops. But thanks to his father, the enemy was defeated and in the end their opponents retreated. A month later, the hero's father returned on his twelfth birthday, but he was carried on a stretcher. Charlotte, Roselle and Ritsu were in Lord Raven's room and were sitting next to his bed. Suddenly, the door to the room opened. Lord Ars came into the room and greeted everyone, saying that they had done a great job. The guys were surprised. They asked the young man where he got such wounds. The young man said that he had been training and everything was fine, so they didn't have to worry. Ars asked Ritsu how his father's condition was. The young man replied that, as he said in the letter, he was full of strength during the battles, but later his health deteriorated sharply. He wouldn't have been alright before, and the war only made the situation worse. Ars said that letting him fight was his mistake. Ritsu said that Lord had a problem before, so it wasn't his fault. Ars thanked the young man for his support. He asked him to let him know if anything else happened to his father, and then headed for the exit. Ritsu asked him where he was going to go. The young man replied that he was going to practice. Ritz was surprised that the young man was going to practice right now, because it was already night outside. Ars smiled awkwardly and said that everything was fine. Ritsu, Charlotte, and Roselle stared at the young man in silence. After a while, late at night, everyone is walking down a dark corridor. Roselle was holding a lantern and suddenly asked if Lord Ars would be okay. Charlotte said that, according to the soldiers, Ars trains every day. She hopes that he will not undermine his health because of this. Then they heard a knock coming from behind the main door. Charlotte was surprised that it could be at such a time. They opened the door and saw Lija there. The girl apologized for such a late visit and asked if Lord Ars was here. Jin said they were very sorry. Ritsu was surprised that Miss Lija was here. He asked the girl what had happened. Lija apologized again. She knows there's nothing she can do to help Lord Ars right now, but she can't help but worry. Ritsu sighed. The girl turned to Jin. She said that she and Ars exchanged letters regularly. He openly expressed his thoughts, and there was warmth in his words. However, after the outbreak of the war, the Lord became very restless. He pretends that everything is fine, but inside he is devastated. He has no former energy, so Lizia came to ask him what happened. Ritz told Miss Lizzie that there was one reason. The girl asked him to tell her everything. She said she was just worried, because Lord Ars was so ill that it even affected the letters. She asked them to tell her the reason again. They invited Lija to come inside. Ritsu said that the problem was most likely that Lord Ars felt guilty for not being able to participate in the war. But more importantly, it was the responsibility for his father's health. Lizzie thought about how pathetic she was. She promised to be caring and loving, but she can't even comfort Ars. Then the girl asked where he was now. She came to the huge gate and thought that this place was probably here. Then she heard a huge knock and a man asked Ars if he was okay. The young man replied that everything was fine. The girl opened the gate a crack to find out what they were doing there. Through the gap, she saw that Ars was training with a man on swords. The girl was delighted and wanted to call the young man, but suddenly he fell and dropped his sword. The man told Ars that his body couldn't take it all, so he suggested continuing tomorrow. The young man said that they had not finished yet. His hands were shaking, and they were all covered in abrasions. Ars said his father fought bravely while ill. He also wants to have the power to protect everyone. He gets up and says he's going to be very strong. The girl was very surprised. Ritsu ran up to her, but she quickly wiped away her tears. Ritsu asked if the girl wanted to talk to Ars. Lija replied that it was best to leave him alone right now. Suddenly, a maid came up to them and called everyone. Ritsu asked her what had happened. The girl with tears in her eyes said that Lord Raven had regained consciousness. Ritsu, Charlotte and Roselle breathed a sigh of relief and asked if it was true. Roselle even began to cry with happiness. He said that in that case it was necessary to inform Lord Ars about it. Ritsu agreed. The maid remembered something. She said he would like to talk to Charlotte, Ritz and Roselle first. They were very surprised. The three of them were standing outside Lord Raven's room. Ritz thought about what he had called the three of them at the same time and what that might mean. Roselle said he definitely did something and it upset him. Charlotte said there was no point in waiting and she had to go. Roselle asked the girl to wait, and Ritz shouted that she should knock first. The door opened and Lord Raven said they were here. His health was failing again and they were probably worried about him. He thanks them for their concern. All three were surprised. Charlotte said it was the first time she had seen a man like this and apparently the illness had driven him crazy. The man said that everything was fine and today he was not talking to them like their lord. Ritsu asked what the man meant. He turned to all three of them and asked if they liked living here. Ritsu, Charlotte and Roselle exchanged glances. Ritsu said that compared to the past, it's like he's in heaven now. Roselle added that he was having a lot of fun, and Charlotte replied that this was her house. The man said he understood. 
he said that they had gathered them here to say that he was going to die soon. Ritsu, Charlotte and Roselle were amazed by what they heard. Ritz said it couldn't be. The man replied that he knows his body well. They need to talk before that happens. He asks if they will listen to him. After a pause, the man said that when Ars first brought them, he had no idea what the young man was up to. Ritz is a brand, Charlotte is a girl, and Rosal was only five years old. However, despite all this, they have done an incredible job, becoming the basis of their strength. He thanks them for coming to Lamberg. He is proud of each of them. He also has a request that concerns Ars. The man says he is still weak. Making a child like him a lord is very cruel. And only now did he realize how much he had not managed to do yet. He should have taken the young man to the battlefield and shown him the brutality of the battlefield while he had the opportunity. But he would not be able to do that anymore. He clutched his blanket and asked the three of them to protect Ars. He asks them not as a lord, but as a father. This is the request of a loving father. Ars is smart and loved by the people. He sees the potential of people, and they are proof of that. He is incredibly proud of him. That's why he's begging them to protect him. All three of them were very surprised. Roselle suddenly began to tremble and said that if Lord Ars hadn't helped him, he would still hate himself and wouldn't get along with his family. He has to learn a lot to be able to help Lord Ars, because it was he who instilled confidence in his strength in him. Charlotte put her hand on Roselle's head and said that honestly, she was not strong in matters of territorial administration. But if he asked, she would do her best. Ars gave her life meaning. She thinks that there is no need to say obvious things like that she will only serve him. Ritsu said that anyone who gets in the way of Lord Ars will be crushed by him. He swears to protect the Lord with his life. Raven said that their speeches were pleasant to him, but they should not forget about their lives either. Then the three of them bow and thank Lord Raven for accepting them. They are grateful for everything he has done for them. The man smiled and was about to say goodbye, but suddenly Ritz heard a knock. He told Raven that he had one request. This Lyja came to see him, so can the man talk to her. At that moment, Lizia was standing outside the door and crying. Suddenly, the door opened and Ritz said that the girl wanted to meet Lord Raven. She can come in. The girl was surprised, and then thanked Ritz. She apologizes for the intrusion and enters the room. The girl bows and says that she is pleased to meet Lord Raven. She introduces herself as Lyja played and apologizes for the late notification of the meeting. Raven apologizes for appearing in such a deplorable state. He asks if the girl remembers their first meeting. Lizia is surprised and asks if they have actually met before. Raven agrees and says that he was the one who asked to make the girl Ars's bride. When they first met, he was trying to figure out what kind of child Lyja was. They were at the funeral and one boy said he was very hungry. Lyja said they would go later, but he had to behave himself now. That's when Raven realized that the girl was very kind. He would like a girl like that to walk hand in hand with Ars. He told Lizzie that Lamberk was small and Ars might be unreliable. The girl interrupted him and said that everything was wrong. The man is right about Lord Ars, that he is too kind. However, he wants to get closer to his father, so he is desperately trying to become stronger. Raven was surprised. He looked at the crying girl and said that she really loves Ars. Lizia agreed and said she loved him with all her heart. The man thanked the girl and then told Ars to ask him to come over. After a while, Lija leaves the room. Ritsu tells her that she has done a good job. Ritsu, Charlotte and Roselle were standing nearby. Lija told the boys that Lord Raven had asked for Lord Ars. Everyone was very surprised. Ritz said that he understood everything, and they went after Ars. Lija thanked Ritz for what he had done. Ritz smiled. Charlotte, Roselle and Lizia went on, but Ritz remained standing by the window. He remembered the first time he met Lord Raven and how he fought with him. Ritsu slammed his fist against the wall. He remembered the moments he had spent with Lord Raven and, left alone, began to cry. At that moment, Raven was watching out the window, but suddenly there was a knock on the door. Ars came into the man's room. The young man said that his father had woken up and it was just wonderful. He was unconscious for a while. Then the young man asked how his father was feeling. Raven apologized to his son for calling him at such a late hour. Ars was looking for information about his father's illness while he was in battle. There are some herbs here, so he thinks it's worth trying them. He also called a doctor from another city. He is very glad that the man is feeling better. Ars's father looked at him peacefully and smiled. Suddenly Ars felt something in his father's gaze. The man told the young man that he had really grown up. When he was his age, he dreamed of becoming a warrior. In fact, Laberk is not his native land. He was born on a small farm in the territory of Mizian. His family suffered because of a corrupt lord who imposed excessive taxes on the people. They were very poor. He couldn't stand it for long and ran away to the city when he turned ten. It so happened that Lord Miziana came to the city that day. 
The mayor of the city invited him to a party or something like that. He no longer remembers the details, but he has remembered one thing forever. He was trembling. Before that time, when he thought about aristocrats, he had only imagined corrupt, greedy people. But that day he saw the true splendor of the Lord and wanted to become like him, the Lord Commander-in-Chief. He learned swordsmanship and became a soldier. He fought to the last and was successful in battles. As a result, he was noticed by Lord Lemire and now he is a lord. Time flies so fast. Vassals, lords, family, all these are his personal treasures, and it is his duty to protect them. The man suddenly started coughing, and Ars asked him if he was okay. The man called his son and said that he felt responsible for his condition, but he should not be responsible for it. It's all a result of his lifestyle, so it's not his fault. The young man squeezed the bed and was about to say something to his father. The man interrupted him and told him to take care of everyone for him. The man politely asked him. Ars was shocked. He closed his eyes and began to tremble. Then he pulled himself together and said that he would definitely fulfill his father's request. The man said that the young man looks better than he did that time. He apologizes to his son and says that it must be difficult to be his son. Ars smiles and says that it's not like that at all and he really is his son. He is very happy about it. The man says it's very brave to say that in front of him. Anyway, how's he doing with Lijah? The young man is very surprised. After that, Ars and his father talked all night, and the next morning his father left this world. It was the middle of the night outside, but the courtyard of Ars's house was brightly lit by a huge flame. Ren and Crate stood together, holding flowers in their hands. Ars called them and asked them to come to him. They were standing in front of a large coffin that was blazing with fire. Ars told his brother and sister to say goodbye to their father. While the flames were burning, all the residents of the city laid flowers at the grave of the great Lord Raven. No one could hold back tears, family and friends. Finally, it was Ars's turn to lay flowers in honor of the memory. Ritsu turned to Arsu. The young man turned and saw all the inhabitants. Ritsu asked if Ars would like to make a speech. Ars said his father taught him a lot. He was a strong man who took responsibility for all of them and a great man. Last night, lying on his deathbed, he told Ars that he was entrusting Lamberk into his hands. He's not like his father and he doesn't have any of his strength. However, like him, Ars swears that he will protect all of them, so he asks them to give him strength. The young man bows in front of the crowd, and flames are burning behind him. Everyone was surprised, and then one man shouted that they would do anything for Lord Ars. Others shouted to him that everything would be fine and they would take care of Lord Ars's receiver. Everyone wished him to prepare and try his best. At that moment, Charlotte was thinking about the past when they were at the battle. The girl devoted herself to magic. One of the knights asked her if she was okay, to which the girl replied that she would cope and they could leave. Suddenly, Lord Raven came up to her and told Charlotte to relax. It seems that she is about to drive herself into the grave. He told her that she would show her metal under Ars's command. Charlotte told the man that it would be done. At this time, Roselle was also crying and remembering the past. He was sitting in the library and sniffing. Suddenly, Raven came to the library and asked Rosal if he was really studying at such a late hour. Roselle, in a panic, said no. He just wants to be useful to Lord Ars as soon as possible. Raven wrapped Rosal in a blanket and told him that he was still a child and he needed to grow up and become strong first. But in the meantime he had to relax. He wants Roselle to enjoy his youth. Lizia was also watching what was happening and remembered how the girl decided to say goodbye to Raven. Lord said that Lyja is the closest person to ours and he wants the girl to help him. Lyja was thinking about Lord Raven. She apologized for the tactlessness and says that she is incredibly happy now. At that moment, Ars thanked everyone and then turned to the flame. He turned to his father and asked him to look after them. He sighed and said that from that day on, he, Ars Luvent, would become the head of the Luvent family. Then everyone knelt in front of Ars. From this moment, a new page in the chronicle of the Luent family begins. After a while, Ars solved the issues of his household. The maid said that Ars had a visitor. The butler asked what they would do with the new food program on their property. Another maid said they had some volunteers. Then a knight came running and said that a disaster had occurred and a wild beast had appeared near the village. Ars was knocked down behind a pile of papers on his desk. Ars said he understood and he would figure it out soon. Three months have passed since his father's death. Ars said he would play with Ren later, and then he scolded Crates for the mess. Shortly after morning, he found himself overwhelmed by his work as a feudal lord. My father did all this work alone and at the same time also participated in wars. He realized again how great his father was. He truly admires him. However, Ritz called him and told Arsu that he would deal with the problem of volunteers in the army. Rosal said that the app should leave the food program on him. 
Charlotte said she would get rid of the wild beast. The maids distracted Arz's younger brother and sister, as it was time for them to have an afternoon snack. Ritsu, Charlotte and Roselle and all the maids help him. He is very grateful to them. And he also began to communicate more often with people from his possessions and listen to their different stories. He also conferred with Ritsu and Rosal. They worked hard for the sake of maintaining order in the possessions and prosperity of the city. Arsu will never become like his father, but he will try to do everything in his own way. Suddenly, someone called the young man. It was Ritz who said it was time for them to leave. Charlotte and Roselle were standing behind him. Ars agreed. After a while, Ars arrived at the meeting. At the council, the men expressed their condolences for the loss of Ars. The leader of the assembly said that Ars's father was very gifted and made the greatest contribution on the battlefields. He offered to pray for Raven. Then the man said that Ars would take his father's place and become the head of the Luvent family. He turned to the young man and told him to introduce himself again. The young man said that he was the new feudal lord, Ars Luvent. He is still inexperienced, but he will try his best to fulfill his duties. The men said that the young man looks better now than before and they are counting on him. The lord told Ars that he was now on an equal footing with them. He will look forward to his success. Ars agreed. Then the man sat down in his seat and decided to move on to the main issue. Military operations were temporarily suspended. However, the latest report says that the Lord of the Clan, in whose ranks they are, has finally decided to gather troops. Thanks to the efforts of the Luant family in the recent battle, they managed to successfully rebuild Kumara. Assuming that there would be no attacks from outside the area for a while, he apparently decided that now was a good time to attack. Ars realized that the time had come. The man turned to the vassal and offered to clarify the current state of affairs. He turned to Minas and asked him. Minas said that at the moment, the capital of Mizian, Alcantes, is occupied by his younger brother, Mr. Bassermark. It is the capital of the region. There are a lot of soldiers and resources here, but under the control of the elder brother, the lord of the clan, is the trading city of Sempula. The economic situation in it is better. The military power of this city is comparable, so the outcome of the war will largely depend on which side the surrounding counties join, so the clan is trying to negotiate with them. The only one from the western counties who did not respond to the offer is Polensky. If he did not join the lord clan, he would be completely surrounded by enemies because of his position. It seems that the Polensky district is not going to betray Mr. Bassermark. Its territory is small, and there are not very many armed forces. It is through it that the shortest path to the east lies, where the capital of the Alcantes region is located. Simply put, without conquering the Vale, they will not be able to bring effective supply lines to the front, and the probability of defeat in the war will be high. The Shroud is a strategically necessary place for them and it is in their best interests to seize it at any cost before the outbreak of a full-scale war. He would prefer to avoid an unnecessary battle and win them over to their side. But if they did not respond to their offer, then they would have no other choice but to conquer the Veil. Ars asked if the man could give them some time to launch an attack. All the men were surprised, and the ruler asked what the young man meant. Ars said that he wanted to try to negotiate with them one last time. The man was surprised. Ars said that in his opinion it seems absolutely pointless not to respond to an offer when there is a high probability that he will be captured. He believes that if they do not find out the reason for their refusal, they will be able to solve the problem. The man said that there was clearly something questionable here. The ruler understood and asked if Ars had someone to rely on for this. Ars looked at Ritz and said that he had such a person. The ruler agreed and said that then they would give him time and delay the invasion. Ars thanked the man. After a while, after the end of the meeting, Ars, Roselle, Charlotte and Ritsu went to the same place in the channel. They were going to stay there today. They came to an orphanage, where they were met by old acquaintances, namely children who had previously been helped by Charlotte. The children met Charlotte and asked how she was doing. Charlotte said they had grown up again. She asked if they were studying well. The children were happy and said that of course they were doing great. They were asking about what Charlotte had brought them today. The girl brought smoked fish, which is often caught in Lamberk. Then the women who look after the orphans turned to Arsu. They said they hadn't seen him for a long time. This is a shelter built by Ars. He asked people he could trust to take care of the children that Charlotte was looking after, and also to bring here and protect all the orphans that could be seen in the alleys. Ars thought that it would soon be time for Charlotte's children to leave the orphanage. At that time, Charlotte was asking the children how they had been doing here lately. The children looked at each other and smiled. The young man said that he was going to take the exams to enlist in Lord Lemaire's troops. The girl said she wanted to work as a maid at the canal castle. Another girl said she was going to work in a bakery on the main street. 
the young man said that he likes to grow vegetables, so he wants to help with agriculture in Lamberk. Then the children turned to Lord Ars and thanked him. Thanks to him, their lives have changed. Ars replied that he had nothing to do with it. For their sake, Charlotte transferred all the money to the shelter, so who they need to thank is Charlotte. The children turned around and thanked Charlotte. Then they left. Charlotte said that at first she thought it was worth inviting them to their domain. But looking at them now, he realizes that leaving them here was the right decision. Ars said Charlotte was right, Lamberk was a good place, of course, but he thought there would be more opportunities for them in the big city. He wants the children to see a lot and learn a lot so that they can live the way they want. Charlotte agreed with the young man. Then Mr. Ars was called by a familiar voice. It was Lizia, who said that she and Ars had not seen each other for a long time. Jin ran behind the girl and apologized that they were so sudden. Ars was surprised by Lizia's arrival and asked what her fate was here. Lija said that she arrived at the canal castle with her father. She found out that the young man was going to come here and wanted to see them. Ars said that he also hoped to meet and was very glad to see them, but it was not worth coming here on purpose. Ars was thinking about what to do now. He doesn't even know what to say. Lizia said that it was such a happy and full of children's smiles place. It seems as if she is being charged by their will to live. Everyone around Ars is always overwhelmed with happiness. The young man was startled, but then he suddenly saw a small child hugging Lizzie's dress with dirty hands. Ars apologized and said that he would immediately order a new dress to be brought to the girl. Lija asked if it was really fun. Suddenly she took off her boots and asked the children if they would let the lady play with them. She invited them to play tag and threatened that she would catch them now. Ars thought about what a wonderful girl Lija was, after all. After a while, at night, Charlotte and the children were already asleep. Ars said that first of all, he would like to thank everyone for their efforts at the military council at the Canal Castle. Ritz said that they had agreed to gather information, as they had discussed for a long time. Ars agreed and said it was all thanks to them, Ritz and Rosal. A few days ago, Roselle said it was somehow suspicious. Charlotte asked what the young man was talking about. Roselle said that, judging by the letters, Shroud is the only county from the West that did not side with their elder brother, the Lord of the Clan. I wonder why they so persistently refuse to come to an agreement in a situation where they can be swept away with one blow during an invasion. Roselle thinks there's something wrong here. He's pretty sure of it. Ritz said that he also stands in solidarity with Roselle. Ars asked what it could be. Roselle replied that he did not know that. He thinks that at this council, Mr. Lemire most likely proposed to conquer the Vale. Without seeing the whole picture, they may feel very sorry if they just take and invade there. He believes that first you need to fully understand the situation. Ars realized that he didn't think there could be anything behind it. Ars asks how they can get information. Ritsu says he has a thought. Why don't they hire mercenaries? Ars asked about the mercenaries. Ritz said that there is a mercenary squad specializing in gathering information called Shadow. He had heard before that the mercenary group he was a member of often contacted them on business. They are rumored to be extremely capable and competent. Ars didn't know there were such people. That's how important information really is. Ars asked Ritz if he would be able to contact such mercenaries. Ritz who smiled and said he would try. Then Roselle intervened and said he had a suggestion. If the council proposes to conquer the Vale, then they should ask them to assign the resolution of the problem with this county to them. Ritsu smiled and said that he agreed with Roselle. Collecting information is necessary in any case. Ars agreed and said they would stick to this plan. Charlotte said that she couldn't wait to meet them anymore, so she suggested that they finish this meeting as soon as possible. Ritsu asked if Charlotte even understood what they were going to do. That's how, thanks to Ritz, they will be able to meet Shadow, so he suggests that everyone try their best tomorrow. Then Charlotte turned to Mr. Arsu and said that she was very interested in this and could they take the girl with them. Everyone was very surprised. Ars said that was out of the question. Besides, it's already night outside and Lizzie's escort hasn't arrived yet. Lija said he wouldn't come. Ars didn't understand what was going on and why he wasn't coming. Lizia said that she had informed her father that she would spend the night here. Ars tried to say something, but Lija interrupted him. The girl said that there was no way she could return home now. Ars turned away and said that it was fine and then he would go and ask for a room for the girl. Lija said that she actually didn't mind spending the night in the same room with the young man. Ars was confused and shouted that they couldn't. Even Charlotte woke up from that scream. Lizia said she was looking forward to tomorrow. Roselle asked if all women were as assertive as Lija. Ritz said that it seemed to him that such powerful women were only here. The next morning, Lizia wished Mr. Ars a good morning. Charlotte asked the young man if he had slept well. Ars wished the girls a good morning. Last night, Lija had said they would sleep together, 
and Charlotte had pulled him over and told him he should sleep with her in her bed. Ars couldn't stand it and shouted for them to sleep together. Ritsu flatly refused to sleep together, so the four of them slept in the same bed. Roselle said in the morning that he hadn't slept at all. Ars supported him, and Ritsu, who had slept well, was getting dressed. After getting dressed, they said it was time for them to leave. He thanked the residents of the shelter for taking care of them. The woman told them to come to them at any time. The young man approached Ars and asked him if he would come to play again. Ars agreed. Then Charlotte was approached by her children. They thanked the girl for everything she had done for them. When she comes here again, they may not be here anymore. They will try their best. Charlotte said she would look forward to it. Finally, the heroes said goodbye, and Charlotte was very pleased. Ars said she was just beaming with joy. Ritz said he thought so too. Ars asked Ritz where he had arranged to meet Shadow's squad. Ritz said he was in a bar on the outskirts of town. They say that when they arrive in the canal, this bar becomes their base. Ars asked how he managed to contact them. Ritsu said that he had resorted to contacting the mercenary group he used to belong to. It was partly just an attempt, but he is glad that everything turned out well in the end. Ars had heard that Ritsu had also been in a mercenary unit before. It turns out that sometimes mercenary units ask other units to do some work for them. Ritsu said that each squad performs its own tasks. His, for example, openly fought in wars. The shadows are already working behind the scenes. He thinks they can be called a shadow mercenary group. They are engaged in information gathering, secret maneuvers, sometimes even murders. Ars was scared and thought that these seemed to be extremely dangerous people. Ritz said there was only one thing that bothered him. Shadow's squad leader has been replaced. The current one, as he had heard, was very young. Ars asked if Ritsu really meant that the quality of services provided had fallen. It could happen to him, too. Ritz said that, on the contrary, the new commander appeared to be a very capable man. They say that what the Shadow Squad was in the past is nothing compared to what it has become now. Lizia said that such outstanding young men deserve respect. Ars agreed with Lija. Then he asked Ritz what the problem was. Ritsu said that the fact is that the squad leader seems to take on only those assignments that he likes. Ars asked if they would have their way and raise the fee. Ritsu replied that it didn't seem to matter to him. Ars asked what kind of assignments he liked. Ritz said he had no idea. Ars wondered if everything would go right, but he had to get him to take the job at all costs, because Lord Lemire was counting on him. Then Ritz said that they had come and it was here. In front of them was an unremarkable building. Ars packed up and went inside. He was greeted by beautiful girls. Ars was surprised. The girl said that a cute boy had come to them, and another girl said that they were drinking juices here. A man came up to them and told them not to be offended. But now all the seats are occupied, so they have to leave. Ars was surprised and said they had an appointment. Ritsu asked him not to worry. He approached the man and said a code word that the sun would soon set, and the time of shadow would come. The man said it looked like they had just vacated the farthest table. He asked them to wait for him. Ars was surprised. Ritz said he was lucky there was one table available. Ars thought about the fact that Ritz had just given the password and it was very cool. They sat down at the table, and Charlotte said she was hungry. Then Ars looked around and saw a lot of menacing men. Charlotte asked why everyone was looking at them and if she could roast them all. Ritz said she shouldn't do that. Charlotte said let's order something for now. Ritz who agreed with her. Then they called the waiters, and Ritz was wondering what he was like. Ars looked at the crowd and thought that Shadow's squad specialized in gathering information. They are probably studying not only their target, but also the customer, which means they are now watching them from this crowd. Charlotte turned to Ars and asked him not to keep the usual waiter waiting. The young man apologized and looked at the menu. He asked if the waiter could bring him some fruit juice. Then he used the analysis and looked at the waiter, who looked innocent. He asked him what was wrong. Ars came to his senses and said that nothing was wrong and everything was fine. He ordered one juice. When the waiter left, the young man said that he needed to go to the toilet. Lija noticed his strange behavior, but remained silent. The young man stood at the sink and did not understand how to understand it. He thought that something was wrong with his analysis, but looked at the characteristics of the Ritz and realized that there was nothing wrong with the ability. The waiter's valor was 92, and his wit was 87. He had simply stunning parameters. At the age of 22, and with such an appearance, suddenly, a knife approached ours. It was the same waiter who asked the young man how he knew that the waiter was the commander of the Shadow Squad. The young man asked that it was Ars Luvent who wanted to address him with an errand. How did he find out that he is the commander of Shadow Squad? Ars thought that he had not noticed his presence at all and how he realized that the young man had noticed, but he was undoubtedly scary. 
The leader demanded an answer from Ars and pressed the dagger on his throat. Suddenly, another dagger was thrust into the wall between them. It was Ritsu, who was already running towards the master. Ritsu asked Mr. Arsa to step back. Ritsu then began to fight with the leader of the mercenaries. The young man swung, but Ritsu grabbed his arm. Ritsu looked at him with a threatening face and asked if he understood who he was contacting. The leader said he was impressed. He thought Ars was an ordinary boy, but he didn't expect him to call his friends. It doesn't even seem to have done anything for this, so it's probably some kind of magic that Ars used. Ars was very surprised and thought that he did not know any magic. Then the young man asked Ritz how he knew. They were interrupted by Lizia, who told the leader to take Mr. Ars seriously. Ars got scared and told Lizzie that it was a men's room. Lizia said that the young man had threatened Mr. Ars with a weapon, so she was afraid that after such rudeness he would have to accept their assignment. She smiled and asked if she was speaking correctly, calling the young man a commander. Ars didn't understand how Lija had guessed. The commander asked what would happen if he refused. Besides, his job will be complicated if someone finds out his true identity. If he gives his best, he will at least be able to kill Ars and escape. Ars was scared, but Lizia, smiling, said that it was absolutely impossible. While Mr. Ritz is here, she thinks that the young man will be able to escape on his own anyway, and then only with all his efforts. She believes that he understands this more than anyone else. Ritsu watched this situation with a menacing face. Ars realized that the conversation was rapidly gaining momentum. The leader asked what if he refused them anyway. The girl said that he was starting to make her angry. The commander has just said that he will kill Mr. Ars. If that happens, they will follow him to the ends of the earth and squeeze the rest of his life out of him. The girl looked at him with a menacing look. Ars was very scared. The dagger fell out of the leader's hands, and he laughed, saying that this lady was really scary. He apologizes for the rudeness and says it was awkward. Ritz said he wouldn't get off that easy next time. Then the young man said that before they talk, he asks Ars to answer his last question. Namely, how he understood who the leader was. He thought he was perfectly disguised. Ars said that he has an analysis skill that allows him to recognize the abilities and personalities of other people. The leader said that somehow he could hardly believe it and that he would not convince him. Ars asked what he should do to make him believe him. Ars then addresses the young man as Sir Mazak. The young man flinches when he hears his name. He said that the young man missed the name because he dropped it a long time ago, and now his name is Pham. However, he also managed to find out his name. His ability is like his nemesis. He says that he likes ours and he says that he is in business. Looking at the Ritz, he says that he does not want to die either. Ours thanks him and says that he didn't even tell him what the assignment was and he doesn't even know who ours is. Fan said there was no need for that. A lot is said about a person's abilities and personality by his environment. A terrifyingly strong mark in an overly assertive young lady. He sees that they both love ours with all their hearts. And you need to bet on the winner, so they will continue the conversation in the back room. Ars thanked him. Ritsu thanked Lizia for helping him out. The girl said it was nothing. Ars didn't understand what they were talking about. Lizia said that she realized that he was the commander by seeing the expression on his face when Ars looked at him and after discussing it with Mr. Ritsu, they followed the young man. Ars thought that everything was clear now, then the commander guessed everything. Lizia said it helped her a lot that the young man is always so easy to understand. Ars realized that Lija was too reliable and it was a little scary. He thanked her for helping her out. After a while, Pham asked again about the case, which is that it is necessary to find out why the Polensky district does not give up. Ars asked if the young man could find out about it. Pham said that of course he would be able to find out. Since this is the young man's first order, he will only take one gold and three silver coins now as a prepayment. Ars agreed. He thinks that he is wondering how long it will take. Even Lord Lemire couldn't get this information, so it might take a month. Pham said that if you think about it, they can come here in five days. Ars was surprised that it was so fast. Pham asked him not to worry, because collecting information of this kind is their specialty, so this is a very simple task. Ars was very impressed and told Pham that she was counting on him. At this time, Charlotte and Roselle were finishing the last dishes. Roselle told Charlotte that it was necessary to leave others as well. The girl replied that the others could order more. Then Ars, Ritsu and Lizia came up. Charlotte said that they had been going to the toilet for a very long time. Lizia said that, to tell the truth, they had just met with the commander of the Shadow Squad and thanks to Mr. Ars, he willingly agreed to take up the assignment. Charlotte asked why they dumped her and she wanted to meet him too. Roselle said he was also very curious. Then Pham came up to them in the role of a nice waiter and told the dear guests 
that it was on the house and he hoped that they would like this delicacy. Charlotte said it was very nice of them and their dishes were just awesome. Fam thanked them. Ars was thinking that Charlotte and Roselle wanted to see the leader of the squad, and he was standing right in front of them right now. Then Fam winked at Ars, and Ars thought that he wouldn't have thought it was a guy if he hadn't seen his status. Five days later, Ars and the others come to the bar again. Ars sees Fam there, who is reading a book. Ars asks the young man where the rest of the Lena squad is. Fam says that everyone is busy, everyone is doing their own thing. Investigations require a lot of hands. Ars says who was investigating him. Fam said he was the only one doing it. The young man's assignment seemed interesting to him, and he carried it out alone. Ars realized that Fam reigns at the top due to his own overwhelming power. That's why he is a commander, despite the low command score. Fam then suggests getting to the point. This investigation was successful, which, in principle, is natural, because he took it up. Ars was delighted and thanked the young man. He asked how Fam was able to do this in such a short period of time. Fam said it was a trade secret. And now he asks for permission to quickly explain to him why the Vale did not join the Lord Clan. As a result of the investigation, he managed to get something interesting. He hands the young man a roll of paper and asks him to take a look. Ars is watching. Ritz says that the signatures here are certified by the seal of the aristocrats who join the younger brother, Mr. Bassermark. This is a written agreement. Only the families who sign them have such agreements. There is also a stamped signature of the Polensky district. Then Ritsu notices the signature of Masawa County. Ars asks about Masawa County and asks where it is located. Ritsu says that this city is located on the same side as them, the west side. Masawa County is considered one of the most densely populated on the mainland and has an extremely strong army, comparable to the capital of the Alcantes region. He will significantly increase the strength of any side he joins. Fortunately, Mass County is on their side, but his signature is in a written agreement with Mr. Bassermark. Ars guesses, and Ritz says that if this agreement is genuine, it means that Masawa County has already betrayed them. Ars was surprised and asked why they had betrayed him. Fam said he didn't know that. Ritsu assumed that if they attacked the Vale and Masa made his move, the siege ring would be destroyed. Moreover, they will be caught in a pincer and, in the worst case, they will lose. Ars thinks that defeat is from an ally who turned against them. Fam said that if this happened, the situation at the front would turn in favor of Bassermark at once. Apparently, Shroud came to the conclusion that by siding with the elder brother of the clan, she would eventually lose. Unsurprisingly, they did not respond to the offer to negotiate. Ritz asked about the written agreement and whether it was genuine. Fam mentioned a trade secret, but it's impossible to get such a priceless thing so easily. Fam said that's the only way he works. He doesn't tell anyone about it, no matter how reliable the person is. However, he knows for sure that this agreement is from the Polensky Castle, where the head of the county lives. He won't be able to tell them anything else. Ritz bowed and apologized for having doubts. Fam replied that it was okay. That's all he's been able to find out, so they can take this paper with them. Ars thought that Fam was so cool. He was able to find out such important information in such a short time. Besides, he can also turn into a girl. Then Ars says that he will pay him now. Fam replies that he doesn't need the money. At that time, he treated the young man rudely. Ars asks, because the young man got even more information than he needed. Fam says it's an apology for his rudeness and investment in the future. Ars agrees and asks the young man to let him pay the young man more next time. He also thanks him wholeheartedly for the work he has done. Fam agrees and says that they will see each other again. Ars leaves and calls Ritz, saying that he needs to report to Lord Lemire about the betrayal of Masawa County as soon as possible. Fam says it would be good if there were no pitfalls here. After a while, they arrive at Lord Lemire's. The man asks if Masa County has really joined Mr. Bassermark. He asked whether the written agreement was genuine. Ars says that apparently it is clearly from the residence of the head of the Polensky district. Lemire says that the head of Masa seemed to have a high opinion of Mr. Clan. However, he is not one of those who would lie. But if this paper is genuine, then it will not be easy to negotiate with the Vale. He tells Ars that the young man is doing well. Without his actions, they would have suffered much more serious damage than they expected. He is grateful to the young man. Ars says it's not worth the thanks. It's all thanks to the commander of the mercenary squad. Then the man calls Minas and tells him to urgently send this paper to Tubikista and Kumer. The man obeys. Lemire says that there is no time to negotiate with the Vale. They need to talk to Mr. Clan. He tells Ars that he will need the young man's help. At this moment, Minas unwraps a roll of paper and is surprised. Minas then stops them and tells them that there is something very suspicious in this written agreement. 
Lemire asks Minas what he means by talking about suspicious things. Minas replies that he thinks there is something wrong with Mass's signature and seal. Lemire and Ars are surprised, then Minas asks them to follow him. The seal of Masawa County has a circle inside a hexagon, and a five-pointed star is drawn inside the circle. At first glance, it seems that everything is correct, but he asks everyone to compare it with the one on this letter. As Minas thought, the shape of the circle is somewhat strange, and the hexagon seems a little smaller. The signature is also very similar, but the handwriting is slightly different. Ars asks what exactly the man wants to say. Minas says that it seems to him that Mass's signature and seal are fake here. Lemire says Mina's estimates are very accurate and can be trusted. His opinion is worth listening to. Ars was surprised that Mina's had such a special gift. His analysis is able to see the status, but he does not show such special abilities. Apparently, you should not rely entirely on the result of the analysis. Ars says that it means that the Veil joined Mr. Bassermark, being deceived by false information, but why instill a lie that will sooner or later be revealed? Ritsu says he thinks they're trying to buy time. They will attack the Veil. She will, of course, fight back and her conquest will take time. In the end, because of the difference in combat power, she would fall, so he thinks it was important for them to keep the Veil on their side longer. The Veil is essentially just a bargaining chip. It seems to him that they have a different goal. Lemire was surprised and asked what it was about an exploding magic stone. Ars asked what it was. The man explained that it was a very rare magic stone mined in the Shroud. In Messian, it is mined only in the Shroud, and counting it, there are only four counties in the entire Samoforce. It can be processed to use strong magic, and also to make powerful weapons. Ars says that means Mr. Bassermark is holding the veil in order to get as many magic stones as possible. Roselle adds that it turns out that now they can no longer attack the veil. Lemire asked why. Roselle said that the scales should initially be on their side. Having spent their strength on crushing it, they will fall for the enemy's bait, so he believes that they can only tell the Veil the truth and make it their ally. Lemire says the young man is right. However, they have repeatedly sent messengers to the Veil, but they did not respond in any way, so they do not know what to do. Roselle apologized and asked if they could listen to his plan. Some time later, in another mansion, the man said that he had read Ars's letter. He later questioned him about where their written agreement came from. The man asked me to tell you more about what they wrote in the letter. Ars said that, as he had already indicated in the letter, Lamberk also wants to side with Mr. Bassermark. The transition of Masava County greatly shocked them. The man says he was surprised by it too. Ars continued and said that joining such a huge force, represented by Masawa County, to either side would be a key factor. This factor will determine the outcome of the war. Small possessions like theirs want to be on the side that is guaranteed victory. The man said that he had heard rumors that a different person was now at the head of Lamberg. Although Ars was small, but it seemed that he was very capable. He even managed to steal such a valuable paper from him. Then the man said that since the young man knew their secret, there was nothing to be done. He will inform Mr. Bassermark about it. He asks to be allowed to welcome Lamberg into their circle and greets Ars. Ars says that he is very grateful to the man, but before that he would like to make sure of something. The young man asks if this is a genuine written agreement. The man says it's genuine. Mr. Bassermark gave it to him personally. Ars said that Masawa County used to serve the Lord of the Clan, so why did they betray him? The man says it's a war. Betrayal of allies to ensure victory for themselves is not a rare phenomenon in it. Ars says that they must understand that by committing betrayal they will find themselves surrounded. He asks if the man knows the specific reason why Masa County ventured to join Mr. Bassermark. He asks if the man doesn't think it's too dangerous to believe in something without knowing the reasons. The man says that he also received letters from the channel, but Ars is Lemire's henchman. He orders the young man to be captured. The young man is surrounded by warriors, but there were two men in robes standing next to him. Suddenly, Ritz appeared from the cloak and pointed his blades at the warriors. Ars asked the man to wait and said that they had not come here to fight. He would like to say something to the head of the veil. The man did not understand what the young man was talking about. Then the young man nods to the second man in the raincoat. He nods in response and rips off his robe. The head of the veil was very surprised. Under the second cloak was the head of the Masava district. Ars grinned and told the head of the shroud that they needed to find out the truth from him. The head of the veil could not believe his eyes that the head of Masawa County was standing right in front of him. He asked him why the man was here. Ars offered to ask him himself. Some time ago, Ars and his colleagues arrived at the head of Masawa County. The man did not understand what kind of written agreement it was. He doesn't recall signing it. Ars said they believe that Mr. Bassermark made a fake written agreement to deceive the veil. 
The head said it was a pretty dirty move. Ars said that they were going to negotiate with the Vale, pretending that they were going over to the enemy's side. He asks if the man could leave a note here saying that the agreement is fake so that the Vale will believe that they are telling the truth. The head of the county was shaking with anger and talks about how they dared to fabricate the seal of his county. It's incredibly humiliating. Such meanness is completely unacceptable. He says that he will personally go to dispel the misconceptions of the head of the veil. Ars was surprised that he would come to him himself. Finally, the head of Masava County turned to the head of the veil and said that he had not signed this written agreement, which means that it is fake. He had always been on the side of the clan master from the very beginning and would never betray him. Now that he knows about it, he wants to ask the man a question. Why, even in such circumstances, he decided to join Mr. Bassermark and disappear himself. The man said that, now knowing that he had been deceived, he wanted to join Mr. Clam. But they had already become enemies to him once. So he did not know if he would accept them if they joined him like that. The head of Masawa County said that he did not know when the man was right that it would be difficult to accept them. But he asked to be allowed to say something. His county is one of the largest in terms of population in Mizian, so his possessions are strong. But at the same time he is obliged to protect many. For their sake, he must win this war at any cost. He thinks that in this they are similar to the head of the veil. But he is sure that the man would have noticed the trap if they had studied this issue more closely. However, he was undoubtedly careless. Or has thought about how impressive the head of Masava County was. That's what it means to be the ruler of a big city. He should collect his thoughts too. Then the man said that Ars had told him about all this, so it was up to the young man to decide. Ars was very scared that such a decision was being pinned on him. Everyone was looking at him. Ars said that the head of the veil was indeed careless, but they all make mistakes. He doesn't want to throw someone away because of one mistake. It may be naive, but he is glad that they managed to resolve this issue without unnecessary blood. He thinks it's fate. The head of the veil must definitely join them. The man was surprised, and then thanked Ars for his boundless mercy. Being one of them, he promises to do his best to help them. Then the head of Masawa County said that was all and he had nothing more to say, so he was returning home. He turns to Ars and asks him to tell Lemire about everything. Then Ars stops the man and thanks him for taking the time to come here. The man says that they should thank Ars. Thanks to him, they did not fall for the enemy's bait and resolve the issue without bloodshed. It seems that there are very capable people in the channel and he will need to remember this. Ars thanked the man for the praise. Then the man grinned and said that the young man's acting was a little strained. In a panic, Ars said that he would take care of her properly. After a while, they reported everything to Lemire. The man said it looked like the head of the shroud was supplying magic stones to Mr. Bassermark. Now, he will cooperate fully with them and supply them to them. Ars was surprised and said it was nice to hear, but the man said it was all thanks to the young man. He also needs to tell Ars something. Mr. Clan said he wanted to meet with Ars. The young man was shocked, and then in shock he started shouting about whether Mr. Clan really wanted to meet with him. Ars is the lord of the small holdings, dating as much as the lord of the clan. Yes, it's like if the village had met with the governor of the region. He asks if there is too much honor for a provincial lord like him and if there is some ulterior motive. Lemire said that he had reported the incident to Mr. Clan and seemed to be interested in Ars. Ars said that he understood and then he would mentally prepare for the day of the meeting. Lemire asked what the young man was talking about. They're going to a meeting right now. Ars was very shocked and asked if they were really leaving right now. Lemire said it was. Ars said that he couldn't do it right away because he hadn't even prepared a small gift for him. Suddenly, someone pushed him in the shoulder and the young man apologized. He saw Roselle and Ritsu behind him, laughing maliciously. Ritsu thought about what Ars was afraid of, because this was a chance to get a promotion. Roselle shouted that this was a good opportunity to find out everything about his allies, so Ars had to go to the meeting. Ars said, clenching his fist, that he would go with Mr. Lemire. The man smiled, and Mina said that then they would be on their way. Two days after leaving the canal castle, Ritz said he had to leave in a hurry, so he hoped nothing would happen to Lamberk. Roselle said that as long as Charlotte was there, everything was fine. Ritsu said it looks like they've entered Sempula's territory, so he thinks they're almost there. Roselle said he would like to buy Charlotte a souvenir. After all, she remained to guard the property. Ritsu turned to Mr. Arsu and asked if he was ready. At that moment, Ars was sitting in a panic. Ritsu asked if the young man was really very nervous. Ars thought that Mr. Clan had invited him to a reception at the Sempula Castle today. He was very surprised when he found out that Mr. Clan wanted to meet with him, but he could not imagine that he would be invited to the reception. The suit that Mina's picked up for him looks just insanely expensive and doesn't it look a little strange on him? 
we'll have to try not to get it dirty. Ars asked why today's reception was being organized at all. Ritsu said that he had heard that feudal lords and powerful aristocrats from the vicinity of Sempula, which is ruled by the lord of the clan, were invited to him. There will be something like a party for the mood. He thinks the clan wants to boost morale before the war. Ars thinks that means a lot of the urban elite will come there. Would it be okay for a hillbilly like him to be there, so he would try not to make a mistake? Roselle then shouted that he was seeing Sempula. Ars was surprised that it was such a huge city. Ritz said that the castle is located on a hill in the far part of the city. Rosel added that this is what he understands a trading city. They made a port out of the whole bay. Ars agreed and said that he sees a lot of ships. Ritz said it wasn't often Lamberk was lucky to be invited to such meetings. He hopes that it will be beneficial for them. Ars says he hopes so too. They finally arrived at the reception. Ars was very tense. Ritsu asked Ars if he was okay, because his arms and legs were moving at the same time. Ars said he was just not used to it all. Suddenly, he saw the eyes that were fixed on him. People were surprised that a child was present at the reception, whom they had not seen before. Ars thought that these looks were very creepy and yet they immediately realized that he was a redneck. Suddenly, someone called Mr. Lemire. The men said they hadn't seen him for a long time, and then started asking how he was doing. Another man said that Mr. Lemire is as active as ever. Ars was surprised that everyone was coming to greet him. After all, Mr. Lemire is a powerful feudal lord. He addresses the crowd and asks to be introduced to Ars Luvent, who is the lord of Lamberk from his county. Ars says he is very pleased to meet you. The men were delighted that the young man was very young, but at the same time polite. The door opened and everyone bowed their heads. Mr. Clan appeared and asked everyone to raise their heads. Ars looked at the man and used the analysis. All the characteristics of the clan were just on top, and the abilities were all above the B rank. Ars was very surprised that the clan had such parameters, indicators worthy of the ruler of the country. It is good that he is subordinate to such an outstanding person. By the way, he had heard that his younger brother, Mr. Bassermark, was even better than him, so he was wondering how big he was. At this time, the clan turned to the lords. He thanks everyone for coming here from their possessions. He is very pleased to see their faces. He would like to tell them something today. They are building a turning point in the Empire's 210th year history. The new year will begin tomorrow, and there is still no end to this Samafer war. And once she's gone this far, it's impossible to fix it. However, the epochs of destruction and rebirth always replace each other in this world. A country that has become a relic of the past will be destroyed and a new one will arise in its place. He will win this war and unite the Messians, and then create a new country. Everyone was surprised. Ours is surprised that Messian will be a country, and that's what the clan had in mind. The man said that it was not so easy to do all this. They are all extremely capable people, and he is proud of each of them. Therefore, he is convinced that by joining forces, they are capable of achieving anything. He offers everyone to win this war together. He was supported by all the people, and Ars stood surprised and looked. People said what an inspiring speech. If Mr. Clan says that great people are gathered here, then surely it is so. At that moment, the clan said that one of them had accomplished a real feat the other day. He called out the name of Ars Luvent, Lord Lamberg, and told him to come forward. Ars was very surprised. Lemire pushed him and told him to go up to Mr. Clan. Ars very awkwardly started to get up. He bowed his head and said that it was a great honor for him to meet a man. His name is Ars Luvent. The man said his name was the Sermachia clan. The clan said that, as a child, Ars revealed Bassermark's insidious plan and, without conflict, tilted the veil that was causing them concern to their side. Everyone was surprised that this child could do such a thing. Ars felt awkward, but the clan shouted that age was not important at all. What is important is what results a person has achieved and Ars has done more than everyone present here. He orders the gentleman to applaud Ars. Everyone started applauding. Ars felt embarrassed and thanked everyone for the praise. He thought about how the clan had glorified him to the fullest. Then he looked at the clan, who was also looking at the young man and smiling slyly. Ars thought about what kind of mischievous smile it was and what the clan was up to. After a while, the young man went out on the balcony and thought that the feudal lord not only had to protect his possessions, but also lead a public life. However, it's quite nice to get a little recognition from everyone. Ritz also said that it would be good if they remembered his name. Suddenly, the clan appeared and asked Ars what was the matter and whether it could be that he was not feeling well. Ars got scared and asked the clan master why he was here. The man replied that he was looking for Ars. In a panic, Ars began to ask why he was looking for him. The clan said that they just wanted to thank the youth once again for resolving the shroud incident. Ars said he was just doing his duty. 
The clan said that Lemire had told him that the young man had done well in gathering talented vassals. And Lemire rarely praises anyone, so the young man has a diamond in his eye. Ars says that there is nothing special about him, these are all his subordinates. The clan said if it was possible to ask the young man one question. He had just been talking to his subordinates and how they looked to the young man. He is proud of them, because they are outstanding. Ars apologized to the clan and said that he had not seen a single outstanding person there. Back then, he hoped to see a lot of incredible people in the hall, but in fact there were no incredible and outstanding people at all. The clan's gaze clouded. The man said that he liked the honesty of the young man. The clan replied that ours was completely right. They are all good guys, full of integrity and zeal, but they lack abilities. The clan said that Ars's words once again convinced him that it would still be hard to win the war with the current number of talented people. Ars asked what the man wanted to say and if they were going to lose the war at this rate. The man replied that he believes that they will have a hard time, since there are a lot of smart people in the enemy's country. The man said that he was pleased to see the emergence of new talents. He has high hopes for the young man. Then he remembers something and says that he can make Ars the head of Canal County. After all, merit should be rewarded. Ars was very surprised by this and asked about Mr. Lemire. The clan said that he was going to give him large holdings someday. He is one of the few vassals he can trust. Then the clan went back to the banquet. Ars thought that this is what he understands, that we talked, that's how we talked. From the head of the province abruptly to the head of the county. He wonders if this is too much of a leap through several positions. At that time, the man said that according to their information, his brother and his subordinates threw a party today, gathering all sorts of small-minded personalities at it. Vassarmark said he wished he had a single capable person. He looked at his subordinates and asked if his friends agreed with him. 